What's going on, people? It's that dude named Dave, and I am back in the building. Took a few days off, but we are back. We are here. I had to do a little bit of black, you know, fade the black in a little bit, you know, a little bit new equipment we're testing out here right now. How's everybody doing? How's everybody feel? We're going to get into the festivities. Festive here, you know what I mean? Y'all know what y'all need to do here press the like button okay y'all know to get down you know what we gotta do here you see the title you see the thumbnail no less than 500k <laughs> she got a six month old that she's looking for this oh yeah y'all Yes, indeedy. We in the building. I'm that dude named Dave. I'm TDND. I am your host for tonight right now. But before we get started, I got to make sure that I am not struggle streaming. Okay, tribe? Okay, AIC? So do me a solid. Do me a favor while we getting started here. Press a one in the chat if y'all can hear me well. Press a two if you can. Lego. <laughs> I need to know if y'all can hear me, guys. Got to make sure I'm in the building that y'all can hear me, right? You know what I mean? Okay, I see a few, I see the ones coming. Okay, y'all can hear me. Okay, okay. That's what I'm talking about. You can't hear me, Skills? Come on, man. Let me get to everybody in the chat in a second. Okay, I got a few more ones here. Also, guys, as we're getting started with the ones here, right? So y'all can hear me without the struggle stream in here. TDND roll call. Yeah, we bringing the roll calls back to these live streams like we used to, okay? I want to know where you repping and where you from here. City, state, zip, area, code, a rep where you from here. You know me, and I don't care. I say where I say, because that's where I lay my head at. That's where I pay my taxes. The 630 Chicagoland suburb, stand up. <laughs> Leo. Yes, y'all. Yes. Yes, I'm back. I'm back in the building. Feels good to be back. I took a few days off, guys. Took a few days off. I'm gonna tell you why. Real good reasons. You know what I mean? But let me see what's in the building first here. Let me get started here. Pooh man, Ricky Bobby on first. Hey, Pooh man, if you ain't first, you last, baby. If you ain't first, you last. Shout out to Pooh man in the building. Anne Marie, what's going on? She makes 500K. She insane. We're gonna get into it, yo. We're gonna get into it. Grits and bacon in the building. Say 500, 500K for some used up box. Yeah, grits. Yeah, brother. Yeah. We got Jurgen in the building. What's going on, my man? My man in Germany represent. What's going on, Jurgen? Cole Fusion. We got CF in the building. What's going on, CF? Good to see you. Good to check you out here. Yeah. Perfect Square. What's going on, my brother? Perfect Square is in the house. How you doing, man? Good to see you. Thomas, what's going on, man? Salute to you, brother. In the building, hey, you got Cheyenne. Ky it's a Cheyenne or Cayenne? How I don't know if I'm saying it right. If it's Cayenne or Cheyenne, I say Cheyenne. You know, shout out to you. She knew she came here last live stream and she back, y'all. That's what's going on. Glad to have you back, girl. Welcome, pinball sliding across the like button. Sub tribe, what's up, you pinball? He back to work, man. He grinding now. He in full fledged work mode now. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Who else we got in the building? My man Scales in the building. Like I saw you earlier. What's up, brother? How you doing? Yeah, the like button didn't stand a chance. I appreciate you, man. That's what's up. Jay Gray's in the building. Slap that like button like your favorite side, Lil Lala. Hey, that's what I'm talking about, man. What's up? Yeah, here come the ones. All right. I like to see these ones here, guys. That's what's up. Thank you. Y'all can hear me. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Arvin. What's popping, Arvin? Arvin's in the building. What's going on, man? Tampa. That's what's up, pinball. I know you're representing that Florida. Tampa's in the house. Jimmy. Jimmy in the building. What's popping, Jimmy? Good to see you, man. Good to see you. Pooh man and east side of Detroit. 313, baby. I represent that 313 because that's my birthday. 313. Even though I'm not from Detroit, but I like that 313, baby. Shout out to, shout out to Detroit, man. Midwest in the house here. 
Boston Mass, my man Thomas here. What's popping, brother? Germany in the building. That's what's up. Atlanta, the 30305 for Purpose Square. That's what's up. Cold Fuge, she's in Bel Air. Now where the Fresh Prince is at, Bel Air, Miller. Mary, what's going on with you? Yeah, Memphis, Tennessee in the house here. 901 is in the house. Skills representing that Norla, New Orleans, y'all. That's what I'm talking about. Finishing down in AZ to 85283. That's what's going on, girl. Yeah. Derek in the building from the great city of Cincinnati Reds, the first team in baseball. Derek, really? You said all that? Don't give a damn about no damn baseball. <laughs> it's always Derek. It's always Derek. What's going on, man? <laughs> Don't you put hold on. Let me put up here. Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby? Don't you do that. <laughs> hey, that was a funny scene, wasn't it? Don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Don't you hey man. <laughs> Rest in peace to Michael Clark Duncan, man. That was a funny scene. That was a funny scene. I love it. Shout out to my man Stuart in the building. We about to get started here. Hey, guys, before I announce Stuart here, right? Y'all know the game plan. You know how we move here, right? I'm an independent content creator, right? I ain't got no sponsors. I did get an email for a sponsorship this week, right? But I don't think I'm going to take it. I talked to them. I got to see what they talking about. I don't think I'm going to take it. I don't think it's worked right for the brand here, right? But I ain't got no sponsors. I'm just out here. I'm just cooking, sauteing, grilling, barbecuing, fried extra hard. How you want to say it? That's how we move in here. So you know what that means, guys? We got to keep the lights on here. So you know what that means? It's Super Chat Thursday. <laughs> yeah, since that just happened here, I'm going to cut the music here. Let me go ahead. I don't want to pop back up again. There we go. So it's in the Super Chat Thursday, guys. You know what y'all got to do. Super chat, super thanks, super stickers, as well as the cash app ticker scrolling below there. I read them out throughout the whole live stream here because, guys, I need y'all help. And, and first things here with that. If you ain't got no money, if you broke as hell, it's end of the month. You ain't paid your rent, your mortgage, your car note, your water bill, electric bill, internet bill, the cell phone's behind, baby. I understand if you ain't got that dough, press the like button. See how that works, guys. Yeah, if you ain't got the money for the super chat game, which I I, I acknowledge and I'm humbled when y'all do so, but if y'all can't do it, press the goddamn like button. But as I say all out here, shout out to my man Stewart in the building, dropping the ten dollar holla, the first super today show. So right now, Stewart's currently today show sponsor right now, and you see how Stewart rocks every time he comes through. He's not heavy in the chat. I get it. He'd like to sit back and enjoy the show, and he chimes in when he wants to chime in. But check it out, no questions, no comments. Man, Stewart's here for the love of the game. <laughs> Man, Stuart in the building. Hey, Stuart, cousin Stuart. Salute. Thank you for the holla. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right back at you on the first Super Thursday. Shout out to you, brother, man. I appreciate you, man. You always come through, man. You, here's the, you, you don't say much. But that's cool, though, because you drop the super and then you sit back. So that must mean that I'm doing something right, that you come back here and you support your boy. Now I'm humble. You got me humble when this happens here, guys. It don't, it, it don't matter if it's the 99 cent, the 5 10 $20 house. The fact that y'all go ahead and support your boy, man. Oh, man, that's that's how I get the juices revved up. It's like, vroom, vroom, you know, <laughs> we get a good we're going to give I'm going to give you a good show now, Stuart. I got to now because you didn't have to give me anything. So now that it's going on here, I got to go a little bit extra here. So thank you, Stuart. Pre appreciate you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Cheyenne. All right. Thank you for the, get the spelling right from the pronunciation. I'm sorry. Because I know how I'd be like, damn it. Why he keeps saying my name wrong or anybody else saying my name wrong? My name is Cheyenne. All right, Cheyenne. I got you. Just want to make sure. See how that works here? I don't want to call your name wrong here. That's why I wanted to make sure, you know, you knew in these parts. I don't want to be like, man, this, this black-ass Negro with his wannabe lots keep getting my name wrong. I be gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, appreciate you, girl. Appreciate you. Pinball says, got my feet in the pool at Tampa headquarters, 90 degrees. That's dope, man. 
Enjoy the pool because you know out here in Chicago, we ain't got no pool weather. Every day right now is three seasons in a day, guys. We wake up to 22 degrees, and then it may get up to like 40, 45 degrees, you know, a little bit. 50 degrees will be lucky with the sun out, and then there might be a period of time when the clouds come in and raining, and the temperature drops, we get a little bit of snow, then the sun comes back out, and then we back into it all over again. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. We literally got spring fall, winter, every day that's going on in March. So shout out to you, man, for got the feet in the pool, man. That's what's up, man. What else we got in the building before we get started here, man? Let's see here. I'm just getting, just going down the chat here. Don't want to leave no one behind here. I see you, Amory. I see you, girl. I see you, Amory. Thank you for coming through. I see you. Don't worry. Let's see here. Cole Fusion says, I support your baseball fandom. We don't rock with baseball in these parts no more. <laughs> Hey, I used to be a I used to be a big time baseball player, but we don't do baseball here, okay? Keep that somewhere else, CF and Derek. Y'all can team up somewhere else with this baseball talk. We don't do baseball talk here. <laughs> Let me, I'm stop messing with y'all, man. Appreciate y'all. All right, Peter says, "What up, Dave Tribe? Happy Thursday, repping the five one four of Montreal. Rep, what's going on, Peter? Good to see you, man. Glad you're back in the building, man. Glad you're back." Let's see here. Derek says, baseball rocks, Dave. Drunk white chicks be up the games. Derek, let me tell you something. I ain't been to a baseball game since 2016. That's the last game I went to. I went to see the Chicago White Sox play the Baltimore Orioles, right? And here's one thing I got to say. You know, shout out to the South Side. I rep this. I rep, me personally, you know, I'm in the suburbs guy. But they go back and forth, North Side or South Side. I'm a South Side because I lived in the South Side for a little bit of time here. So, of course, I rep that South Side, right? Let me tell you all. Let me tell you something, Derek. I went to this game that had five home runs. <laughs> the ball was leaving the yard that day. It was jumping. And I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. I can't remember if it was Manny Machado who played for Baltimore at that time. I, I can't remember if it was him or somebody else. He cracked three of them joints. <laughs> and you want to know something, Derek? I was bored out of my goddamn mind. It was the most boring three and a half hours that I had to goddamn endure. And I've been to my share of baseball games, and I realized baseball's boring. I used to play these shits. I used to be cold. But you want to know something? I don't care about drunk white chicks. <laughs> hey, I don't have them. If I want to be out here in the streets with drunk drunk girls, that's not a problem for me. I don't need to go to a baseball game and be bored of my mind to see drunk white girls. <laughs> so, nah. Then after that game, I said, I sat there, I was in the heat, I'm over here seeing five home runs, and I'm saying to myself, like the Holocaust, never again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, I'm good on baseball, man. I'm good. What's going on? I am divine. Good to see you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Dave, you mad because Chicago sports sucks? Have you seen even your hockey team? Derek, we've won more championships than Cleveland. Come on, man. <laughs> the fuck up blackhawks we had a mini dynasty in the 20 in the 2010s man you know what i'm saying you know, the, the cleveland cavaliers y'all lucky to get one damn ring out of Le lebanon james right okay baseball white Sox, and cubs both won a world series this, this recent not recently of course current years but both teams have won this century far as world series concerned here the only thing that's been suspect is the bears but you know what though you can't talk shit about about chicago sports when ohio sports is literally in the goddamn motherfucking gutter y'all had a chance with cincinnati the Bengals, and what happened y'all lost the super bowl okay that's always been y'all paint space that's always been y'all logic so calm down if i had a choice between chicago sports teams or ohio sports teams i'm gonna stay here in the shot you can keep that ohio bastardization oh damn hey i didn't have to go that hard on you Derek. pause <laughs> you're my boy Derek. but still man but still we still have no building before we get started here uh, what's going on, Frank? Frank in the building, man. Right on time. H-Town. That's what's up. Houston in the building. Yeah. What's going on with you, man? Let's see here. Who else we got in the building, man? Pinball says, getting ready to take these Easter L's from the Grands of PS5 this weekend. Okay. I didn't even know. I didn't know it was Easter this weekend. I had no idea it was Easter this weekend until I got invited to go to Fogo the Child on Sunday. I was like, yeah. Uh, who, who would not mind a little Fogo? Little, little Brazilian steakhouse. All kinds of meats and cuts and cuts and meats and meats and cuts and cuts and meats. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, yo. I was like, why, yo, why are you going to Fogo on Sunday? So said, Dave, it's Easter Sunday. I was like, goddamn, okay. <laughs> hey, yeah. 
What's up? Shout out to you, Pinball. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. What's going on, quality guy? Quality guy in the building. Good to see you, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Cheyenne. Yeah. Baseball is boring, man. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we thank you. We don't do baseball here no more. I used to. I used to be a cold behind the plate, man. I used to be cold. Your boy could hit. Your boy could throw. Yeah. Your boy was a five tool player if I actually stayed with it. I just want to deal with the goddamn racism. My dad took me off the team back in the day when I was 12 years old. I never looked back playing baseball, man. How is it that I'd be the only black on an all-white team? I'm throwing harder than anybody else. I was, in the, I was the youngest person on the team the year before. I, I was killing it. And then a year later, I got a whole bunch of young little white boys who were younger than me, of course, coming in and couldn't hold my goddamn jock strap in the, in the Coach kept me, kept me on a damn bench. Every practice, I was fucking them kids up. Pause. Real talk, guys. I'm not even lying to you. I'm not going to stay long in this here. But the reason why I don't fuck with baseball no more, my dad took me out the sport. I played it when I was six years old up until I was 12 years old. And it got to the point my last year, i never forget, driving to the game, my dad was like this here. He was just driving. said, if he got you on the bench for whatever goddamn reason, you done. I never forget him saying that. I said, all right, Dad. And I get to the game. I'm not started. I'm not. I'm benched. He was like, fuck this shit. I never forget the end of the game. He ripped my jersey off and threw it at the coach. He was like, my son was starting last year and Molly Wop all your kids in practice. And why is he riding the bench? Fuck you. That's what my dad said. And threw, the, and threw my jersey at him and kept it moving. You can't explain it, guys. Even when we had practice for the outfield, I was showboating my ass off. They were throwing, we had the high pop-up game. I was like, I was sliding in the ground. Kept, I didn't drop not one ball. I was faster than anybody else. Matter of fact, to let you know, in my, my freshman year in college, man, I ran a 10 200 yard dash. That's how fast I am. 100 meter, not 100 yards. 100 meter. I ran a 10 200. That's how I am. So you just getting around the goddamn outfield was nothing. I can I can play center, right, left, and he wouldn't just start me in the goddamn outfield for some reason. The year before, the previous coach, when he was the assistant coach, I was starting third base. I was the third pitcher, and I was heading fifth in the lineup. <laughs> Only people who were above me were all the kids. I'm 12 years old, right? Uh, everybody who was above me went to high school the next year. So how's it the next year I'm riding the bench? None of those kids can compete with those boys. So after that year, I was like, fuck baseball. That's what happens to a lot of black kids in the suburbs, you know? Our parents try to get us into baseball, you know? We out here juicing. We juicing around, doing what we got to do. Not juicing like this, you know? But we moving. We, we killing the game. And for some reason, dumb white coaches in the suburbs did not want to see the black kids on the field, even though it meant their chances winning. So after that year, I transitioned because that was in the springtime. I ended up running track. After baseball, I literally, that was it. Then I ran track. I never looked back at baseball. So, yeah, man, that's why I don't fuck with baseball, man. I mean, like, it was boring anyway to watch. But when you have, when you literally have success, when you know for a fact that you're throwing a 70-plus mile-an-hour fastball at 12 years old and you can't get on the field, oh, one thing that I knew what happened, though, I was so fucking mad. I'm cursing a lot right now, guys. <laughs> I know, this thing's about to get up. demonetized here. Let me tell you this, and I'm going to move on. I was so mad at the coach's son. He was on my team. Right. I remember it was at practice and they finally let me pitch and I knew him. I was smart. Like I'm 12 years old. I was like, he going to swing at anything inside. I knew it. I, I, I don't have to, I just got in reports on every, I mean, I was, I'm OCD back then. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to throw him my hardest motherfucking garbage. I was throwing inside here. He was swinging. I was like, <laughs> I said, like, got him. I never forget when I struck him out. I threw a fast ball at his face and he swung up that. He was so fucking scared. And you want to know something, guys? Hey, I never pitched again in practice. And I never looked at him. I was like, yeah, your son sucks. <laughs> I took it personal. I said, yeah, your son sucks. Right? Come on now. I'm telling you, we had to deal with that. Let me get back to the chat, chat here. I have to tell y'all what, what that is, though. You know, it, it, baseball is boring, but the fact that you know you can play, you know that those kids couldn't hold your fucking jock strap and everything, and you're watching them play. And you and then and on top of that, too, guys, our team wasn't that good. <laughs> and then one thing, we had the top team, and these boys came in, and they, and they were just blowing me away. It was like, we sucked that year. Like, wouldn't you want to have a chance to put a to put me on the base? Cause I could outrun anybody. I could steal any base out there. Nah, you wanted your whiteness to shine. And that showcase there that our team was horrible because you chose whiteness over winning. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Whoa, Cleveland is better than Chicago and Cincinnati. Uh, how many World Series has Cleveland got, brother? Just answer that question. 
Just answer that question. How many World Series? How many World Series? How many World Series recently, too? All right? That's all we got to ask for. That's all we got to ask for. All right? I <laughs> as a track, cross-country, soccer chick over here. I ran cross-country, too, in high school. I did that. I did cross-country to get in shape for track season. Browns, Indians, Cavs, we all. Browns ain't eating shit, man. <laughs> you saw what happened? Y'all got the nasty man, Deshaun Watson. As long as you got the nasty man there, ain't nothing happening, Perfect Square. <laughs> the nasty man's y'all QB, Deshaun Watson, a.k.a. the nasty man, okay? Y'all ain't eating. Cavs eating. Check it. Know what's going to happen with the Cavs? Donovan Mitchell is leaving to go to New York in free agency if they don't trade him because he ain't signed no contract extension. Yeah, y'all got a nice little squad now. It ain't going to last because Donovan didn't want to be there, man. Stop playing with me, Perfect Square. Come on, we eating. Y'all ain't winning no clip. Y'all didn't get out of the first round last year of the Cleveland, with, with, with the Cleveland Cavaliers, and your boy Donovan's going to go to the big city. Come on, man. Stop playing. Stop playing. You know he's leaving too. I don't know why you ain't even talking about it. It was more than personal, man. Hey, Derek, you, if you've been through what I've been through, you take it personal too. Hell yeah. Like, you you sit on the bench and you watch a whole bunch of sorry-ass white boys. Yeah, I, I said it. If you white, don't don't take it personal because you know you know what I'm talking about. A whole bunch of sorry-ass kids getting to, getting to play because I'm the only black kid on the squad. Eh, come on. Hell yeah. Despite seeing good people, prayers up for the victims. Yeah, man, that was crazy in Baltimore a couple of days ago, man. Rest in peace. Prayers for everybody out there, man. That's that's going to take years to correct. That's going to take years to clean up. Yeah, yeah, that, that was horrible on Tuesday. That was horrible, man. Yeah. The big red machine. Nigga, you talking 70s. Get the fuck out of here, Derek. I'm going to time your ass out. Ne Derek, the next time you say some dumb ass shit like that, you get a five-minute timeout, okay? I'm talking about the big red machine. We talking the 1970s. Man, you talking about when disco was in. Man, stop playing with me. Talking about some disco, disco, disco. What's going on, man? Good to see you, man. What's good? Hey, man, it's Thursday. That's what's up, man. Satchel Dave. Hey, man, I could cook back in the day, man. I could cook. I can cook, man. I'm not even lying to you. My dad was alive right now. He'll tell you. It, it hurt my dad to, to take me off the team because my, dad, my dad's first love was baseball. So the fact that he took me off the baseball team, I know that hurt his heart, man, because he knew I was good. He knew I could fly around the bases. He knew I could hit for average. He knew that I could catch any ball. He knew I could get that ball from third to first and no problem. Man, no first. The, the kids on my team playing first base were scared to catch my balls, too. That was another thing. Pause. <laughs> When you throw a base, I, I, no one was getting anything on me. I Man, I whipped that third or from shortstop. Man, they were scared to catch my shit because I threw that hard as ever pause, man. Hell yeah, man. No doubt. Yeah. Baseball fun when you're in the game. Man, it was boring when I was in the game, Rome. <laughs> it was, the only time it was fun when I was pitching because you're constantly active in the game, man. If I wasn't pitching, the whole game was boring. Yeah. What's going on, Team Peterson? Checking in from Casablanca, Morocco. Oh, snap. In lieu of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Support my Midwest brother, TDND, and the AIC crew. Seven hours ahead, I got the Dixie Cup, Ramadan Wi-Fi. I can't super chat or donate. It's all good, team. Like button, then. If you can't, If you can't super, likes. That's what we're doing here, man. Shout out to y'all, man. I appreciate you for coming through, man. It's all good. Like I said, man, I ain't trying to guilt trip y'all. I'll check it out. Shout out. We got the first cash app in the day. Before I get to a team, I ain't trying to guilt trip y'all into doing it here. I appreciate when y'all do. I'm just letting you know I'm an independent content creator and these things cost here, you know, so I just, I hope that, you know, you guys can help me out here. But, you know, if you can, press the like button, team. If you press the like button, you're good to go. We got my man. Let me see here. Master Mason Bay. What's going on, Master? You, it's, it's, it's Namir. I'm not going to put your whole government name out there, but my man, Master Master Mason Bay, came in with the $10 cash app saying, for my whole paycheck. God damn, brother. Yeah. Your whole paycheck? I want your whole paycheck, man. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, man. Hey, brother. Salute. Thank you for the holla. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right back at you on the first cash app of the evening, man. Appreciate you. I hope it ain't your whole paycheck, brother. I said if you broke as hell, press the like button. Man, I know times are hard. I hope you mess with me, man. Times are hard. Tell me if that's your last $10. But you know what that means, though? 
I got to give you a bomb ass show. Just like my man Stewart here. We got to get it cooking here. So I got you, brother. I got you. Don't worry, man. Who else we got in the building? Says, I'll hit you back when I get back to Mecca. No doubt, man. Hey, hey, man. Hey, hey, get your, get, get your praise on. Hey, man, do what you got to do, man. Get right. Get your mind, your soul, and your, and, and your body right, man. No doubt. Appreciate you, Team Peterson. Appreciate you. Let's see here. Who else we got before we move on? Trigger. Yeah, it ain't no trigger. Hey, Perfect Square, I'll go ahead and time your ass out for five minutes, man. <laughs> Don't think I won't. You be sitting there trying to type something you can't. I, guys, I haven't timed anybody out in a long time, right? Don't make me time y'all out. You be like, oh, damn, Dave, really time me out? Yes, I will time you out, guys. So stop playing with me, man. Yeah. Cheyenne, what y'all say here? I was, yeah, I hit a few D back games when our contractor friend gave us a good season. Okay, y'all talking about that here. What's going on, Jay? Lakers are kicking ass, bro. Yeah, till they get to the play in game and they're going to be done. <laughs> They'll make it to the play-in, and that's about as good as the Lakers are. Man, y'all y'all be getting – I'm telling y'all, some of y'all sports fans, y'all be getting all amped up, knowing the inevitable is going to happen. Y'all ain't getting past the play-in or the first goddamn round, okay? So I get it. It's March. You're getting all happy. Yo, we got a chance now. We got a chance. Man, the season tells y'all how much of a chance y'all got. Y'all getting bounced. <laughs> I'm placing a curse on Chicago. You can't place a curse on Chicago. We won enough rings the last decade, and so we good right now. Ain't no curses. You're going to need 100 years for a curse. We good. Blackhawks got multiple Stanley Cups. The Bulls, I know it's been a while for us, but we got six rings. Some y'all can't talk about. Yo, do y'all got multiple Stanley Cups? Do y'all got multiple NBA championships? Do y'all got to y'all y'all got multiple baseball teams? Do y'all got World Series in the last two decades alone? Man, keep y'all goddamn curse. <laughs> What's going on, Shy Town? <laughs> Hit the like button. Dave went through the same thing in Little League. High Park growing up. Jackie Robinson League. Oh, for real? I know about the Jackie Robinson League. Up there. Yeah. Okay. Man, these white folks have no idea how they can make the sport better by letting those brothers play. They had that. There's a reason why baseball is not the way it's supposed to be because so many great athletes who are black are saying, No, nah, I'm good. Why well, I got to deal with this slowness? Why well, I got to deal with the bullshit? You know, I can hit for power. You know, we can hit for average. You know, we can out throw you. We know we can outrun y'all asses, right? And you know, if we get into the scuffle and the fights, you know, you ain't fucking with us unless you're a catcher and got your equipment on to soften the blow. <laughs> You know what I mean? But for some reason, they want to act like it's America's pastime and we got to keep the Negroids out of it. And then what y'all do is y'all go ahead and get the cats from the Dominican who coming across the waters and everything for a better life. And then y'all juice them out of the money they should be making and then treat them like shits. Yeah, because, you know, we ain't taking the shits. Yeah. Shout out to you, Chi-Town. Yeah. I think every black kid cut up in the suburbs in the 80s and 90s have a similar story like mine's. That's why you don't see black kids playing baseball now. Not, at least not that. That's not the only reason. But if you're a black kid, why would you want to deal with like, with, uh, like eight or nine other racist ass white kids and parents when you go in boss, you go on basketball or football and just start fucking everybody up, dunking on cats, cross them over, or just hitting them hard? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, I think every black kid in the suburbs, 80s, 90s, may have had some sort of thing that I went through. You know, I, I like to do a poll, reach out to cats who play baseball. I mean, like, yo, man, did y'all deal with this? Yeah, no doubt. When was the last time the Reds won a, won a series? That's what I'm talking about, Thomas. Man, I don't even follow baseball. We don't know. Don't be mad. Wait, don't be mad, Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas just lived down, not too far away from me. The Big Hurt. Big Hurt's a good guy, man. Hey, we beat the A's. Man, you, this, is, this is a straw man conversation. Well, we did beat the A's. When? When? Likes, like, shares, and subscribe. Thank you, Jay. Yeah, we're going to get into it in a second. Salute, Vince. Welcome. Got Vince in the building, man. Shout out to Vince. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's you, Perfect Square? Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> so your name on YouTube is different from on Cash App here, so I don't know who we drop it if it's not the same on YouTube, you know? So I appreciate you, man. Thank you, man, for the holler, man. I'm still talking about your damn your, your Ohio sports, but I'll take your money. <laughs> all right, let me scroll down here a little bit more. We're about to get caught up here. Lakers all the way, bro. It's a squad playing sync in sync now. Man, I tell you, y'all, yeah, yeah. Hey, 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 Jay. 
Hey, when Lebanon James gets knocked out or he gets hurt with a goddamn, uh, he going to have some sort of quad pull and AD's going to have a m- mysterious injury because you know the man's built like paper mache. And then all you got to do is rely on Austin Reeves and everything and y'all get bounced in five. Y'all been make it that far. I don't want to see y'all be quiet. Hey, I'm going to remember this here. When the Lakers get bounced early, I'm coming back and be like, that's exactly what i'm doing yeah 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 let's see here there's a all i know is core fest is faster than bmws <clears throat> rome they're supposed to be they're supposed to be rome your car is a thousand pounds lighter than my car my car is a four-door and you got a two-door coupe sports car <laughs> Depending on what kind of Corvette you got, you either you probably got if you got it you if you got the new joint, you got the mid rear engine joint for the balance and control. You're lower to the ground. Yes, supposed to be the GT. God damn it, Rome. That's a badass argument. See, I just broke your argument down. You're supposed to win. And you know what though? I be fucking some Corvettes up on the road sometimes, man. <laughs> Hey, man, I was driving yesterday. Yo, we was whipping it on 88. We were whipping it on 88. We were whipping it on 88, man. Hey, man, stop playing with me. <laughs> right, J- hey. I Jay, you must be reading my mind right now. Because like a half hour ago, I'm going to get to the show in a second, guys. Let me just get this out the way. This time last year, I was going back and forth with Clifton. Shout out to Clifton. I don't know if he came in the chat. Yeah, I'm, I'm still getting called. Oh, there he is. What's up, Clifton? Hey, Clifton. Ain't it funny how time flies by here? I see Clifton in the chat here. Check it out, Clifton. Remember this time last year? We were going back and forth about the Job Morant situation, the strip club and the guns, and then the interview with Jalen Rose and talking about, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. And he does the same fuckery again. <laughs> Ain't it funny how time flies? It's like a year later now, bro. We still, I'm still on YouTube. You still following me. And it's still the same thing where Jay is at right now. Where's Ja? <laughs> He's hurt. Right now. I get it. He's hurt. I know. I know. But ain't it funny that all that crap that was like a year ago, man? It, it, it's just funny how you you have you have a young team and you have the chance to make some noise, and all it takes is a distraction and a fuck up to derail a whole team, man. Shout out to you, Jay, for bringing that up. Man, I was thinking about that early. I was like, yo, man, it's time last year. I was going back and forth with Clifton about this, and here we are. We're a year later now, man. That's what's up. Appreciate you on that one. Let's see here. Yo, Dave, you're a hater, bro. Bulls ain't been shit since Jordan. I, I'm a hater? Or am I, or I'm giving facts? <laughs> it's kind of funny how when someone brings facts up, oh, you're a hater. You're a hater. Here's the thing here. The Lakers suck this year. It's facts. They suck this year. The true mark of a championship team is when you get to a certain point in the season. This is when you know you got a team that's good. When you get to the 60 game mark and the record has to be around the 40 to 20. 40 wins, 20 losses. That you know, you may not win 60 games that year. But in the NBA regular season, guys, when you're looking at consistency, you're looking at injuries, you're looking at so many factors with their schedule and what conference they play in. And one thing you're going to see when we get to that 60 game mark, if they're around the 40 and 20 mark, a little bit more wins, a little bit losses, give or take around that mark there, that you can even, that you're going to have the opportunity to win over 55 games. There may be a slight chance you can get the 60, 60 wins. You know you're a good ass team and you're going to make a run. Barring any injuries. If you're hovering around motherfucking 500, that ain't no hater, Jay. Just means that you guys are sorry as sin. You're average or you're below average, okay? 45, 44 win teams ain't championship teams. And that's a fact. It could be the Lakers. It could be Memphis. It could be any goddamn team, man. So don't get mad at me because your team is sorry this year. <laughs> Lord have mercy. They got to break y'all bubble, man. Laker has way more championships than Raggy at Chicago. Who, who disputing that? I never made no argument that Chicago's a better run franchise than the Lakers. Y'all had Jerry motherfucking West. Y'all had Dr. Buss, arguably one of the greatest owners of all time. I ain't disputing that. But just because y'all got more championships, we live in the present, Jay. We live in the presence. You know what the present means? Y'all team is fucking sorry. 
<laughs> Lord have mercy, man. You barely 500. Stop playing with me. Yeah. Clifton says, baseball can easily invest in city leagues, city little leagues, like they do in DR and other countries. They could, Clifton, but you know how the game is. They don't want no brothers in the if, if they did that, they can control DR and other countries who they go out on, on onto the rosters. It, you know, the A1 guys, you know, guys they say they're 25 years old, they're actually 30 years old. They can choke from the roster. But if they open it up to the city and inner league, you know, and inner inner cities and letting us black boys play the game, man, these white boys wouldn't have a chance. You will see it's gonna be just like football. It'll be just like football when that if they actually develop the inner cities and allow black boys to have a chance to play things of that nature, you would see just like the NFL where it's 78 percent black and 22 percent white. Because once we get involved and we into it, we dominate. We're you know, so hey man, they ain't trying to do that. They they got keep their quotas for new for athletes, man, Clifton. I <laughs> oh, appreciate you. What's going on with Mo? Good to see you. Good to see you. Clifton says, Gilberine talk about how they softened the NBA and took defense out of the game to make it more European style and get more white players. I did see that when he mentioned that. And combination that that's true and the combination is open up for the, the likability of the TV game for more scoring. So I do agree a little bit with Gilbert on that one, you know. But the thing is, uh, Americans ain't playing defense either. You know what I mean? So, you know. I did kart racing, but it got too expensive. So my dad and I built a race car. That's dope, Frank. That was dope. What's going on, Ty Pro? How about them Lions? Yeah, shout out to Detroit. You know, <laughs> they had a good year. <laughs> y'all, y'all finally won a playoff game. It's like the second playoff game in my entire life. I'm 44 years old. The last time it was with Barry motherfucking Sanders. Okay. <laughs> shout out to the Lions, though. <laughs> NBA is changing of the old guard. Old heads getting old. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. That's a lie. That M5 is a beast. Yeah, it is, Frank. That's what I'm saying, though, right? Yeah, you get that M5. That M5 is stocked at 625 horsepower. Or the M8 competition is stocked with 630 horses, right? Hey, that the new M8 competition, Frank, and for you, Rome, that bad boy does like a 0 to 60 in like 2.7. <laughs> And don't let and don't let a dude who got a few coins modify that to put some new down pipes and put an X pipe conversion on that thing there. Go ahead and tune that sucker. I've seen M8s that are a thousand horsepower of over 800 pounds of torque that will smoke a goddamn Corvette. I'm telling y'all, yeah, y'all may be light and everything like that. Put that launch control on that M8 competition, Rome, and you're gonna be in some trouble. You're gonna be like, oh, I'm in for it. Oh no. <laughs> I went to Riverfront Stadium to see the big red machine. Even saw Hank Aaron get within one home run of the bay. That's dope, man. Good shit, man. C8, 670 horsepower. I, I told you it's, it's sick. But that here's the thing, though, Rome. That, that torque, that torque and launch control. But you're smaller and low to the ground. But that MA competition does a 0 to 60 in about 2.7. Give or take, man. Hey, BMW ain't playing. <laughs> hey, we get to the competition with the M5 and M8, the, the competition packages. Hey, man. Hey, Rome, <laughs> you ain't seen that work. Dave got triggered again. I ain't got triggered. Right, Ja. <laughs> yeah. Only because he is injured. I know he's injured, but isn't it seem like the negative energy? What 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 is going to happen is bound to happen now. It will happen, you know, but it's he's carrying that negative energy, man. That's what's going on. It was like he was bound to get hurt if he wasn't going to be suspended. Let's see here. We're getting caught up here. Shout out to everybody in the chat here. Uh, uh, let's see here. I'm just getting caught up here. Find me an N5 or M8. Come to Chicago, Rome. Come to Chicago, the Chicago BMW clubs. I got you, Rome. Come up here to the shot. All right. Hey, Rome, my 650 does a zero. I have a six. I don't even have an M6. I have a 650, and my bad boy does a zero to 60 in three seconds. My shit is tuned, down pipes. I got a whole bunch of stuff in my car. My car ain't stock, and it's unofficial does a zero to 60 in three seconds. Don't make me do a 60 roll or a 40 roll when, I got, when I'm all-wheel drive getting going there, man. I know you got a vet. I'm just telling you, where we can modify it in two cars, man, you just don't know, man. At 2.7 seconds, you're popping wheelies. Oh, no, no, you're not, Clifton. That's what all-wheel drive kicks in. 
You do launch control, man. What happens is the back, you know, because you no know, BMWs are naturally real, real, uh, all wheel drive. Well, real, real is naturally BMW. But when you activate the all wheel drive and as well as the launch control, what happens is the computer system bounce out. It goes, it's like 80 20. So it, all the power is harnessed in the back. But then as soon as it feels any kind of, you know, delay, the front kicks in and then that balances out. You see, the, the vest is all real, real drive and it's low to the ground. And it's only like, what? Four, what is it? Man, a vest like, what, 3,500 pounds, Rome? A vest like 3,500 pounds, and then you get like an M5 or M8, you're looking at like 44, 4,500 pounds. Yeah. Do you think Golden State would trade Draymond Green all season? He got to fucking go now after that last throwing out the game. Draymond don't give a damn no more, man. He ain't, he ain't worth it no more. He he as much as he he was a good defender he, i mean like his, his three point shot was falling again this season but he doesn't keep defenses honest and he's more headache than reward right now and if anything go states wasting chef curry's prime he what Steph's like 35 36 years old and he's still in his prime right now and they're wasting championship years by holding on the dream on right now and it ain't worth it right now i'm telling you they got to get rid of him the car on the left side of my default is a twin turbo 917 wheelhouse power. It features uh Vengeance Racing YouTube channel shop with the fastest records are for Chevys. Oh, you talking about Chevys here? Okay. Let's see here. C8, C067, and like that. Okay, you talking to Clifton. I may be hating on BMW, but it's the best car I've ever owned. I have an X3 SUV. I like X3s. That's the kind of cars they always give me when I take my car to the shop and get a loaner. I like me some X3s, man. X3Ms are low-key, nice and fast as hell, man. Yeah. So, okay, guys, let's get to the show here. Let's get to the show. Give me one sec. Let me do this here. How did this stop here? Lord, give me one second, guys. Why did this stop here? I hate this happen. There we go. Let's get this back here. Okay. We're back here with that. Let's do this here. Let's do this. All right. We got that cash app. Appreciate y'all. Okay, guys. Draymond going through a divorce. He's wait a minute, wait a minute. Hey, Shot Town. He's going through a divorce already. <laughs> See, I don't keep, right lately, guys. I'm not keeping up with the NBA players' personal lives like that, you know. But he just got married like less than two or three years ago. It was a big ass wedding. He had he had Chris Paul there, and he had a Le LeBron was there, and everybody who's an NBA player who he thought he was his enemy and friends was at the freaking wedding. I watched the pictures, I saw him online, and he's already going through divorce. Man, this this is this is why. Before we get into the show, if you're an athlete, I don't care if you're 30 years old, why the hell are you getting married? During your playing career, I get it. I'm in love, love, love. L O V E. What the world needs now is not another love song. <laughs> <laughs> Washington, Mo Better Blues, right? I don't get it why athletes will go ahead and get married during their career when they're they're still on the road. They are still going to have the most access to the most women that's going to come and throw themselves at you. Even when you're a strong man, you're going to have some weak moments. You're making the highest potential money you're ever going to make here. Why don't they just go ahead and wait till their career is over? That way that, you know, you, you, you're, you got through your young age, you got through the road and everything like that, so that the woman that you end up marrying, the woman that you're with, recognize that you're going to be home all the time. Most of these divorces, of course, Draymond's still playing right now, but a lot of these NBA athletes' marriages end after their playing career is over because the woman is used to him being a row when they're gone, and then, like, you literally transition to two different lives, and then the, it makes it like, this nigga's always home all the time. And the guy's like, I didn't know it was this hard being at home. <laughs> and it makes you know they break up really fast here, man. So, yeah, man, it's crazy. Edwards from the Timberwolves is a beast. Yeah, Clifton. I like me Anthony Edwards, man. I, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. He remind, he's. I'm not trying to say he's my man MJ here, but his game reminds me of MJ 84 87, through 87. Like, just that reckless abandon to go into the cup. People thinking that he doesn't have a legit jump shot. You can tell the last three years in the league, he's worked in this jump shot. He's gotten better every year. He's he's physically imposing, too. When Michael started working his body, he's physically imposing. I'm not saying he's Mike. That's not. I'm just saying, though, he has a game like early Mike. 
You know what I'm saying? And I and I love it. He don't give a damn. He's just in your face, man. Pause. I I, I like Anthony Edwards' game. I'm in lust. <laughs> I like that. Is a right, Dave. That's like a musician like Drake or Justin Bieber getting married in the early 20s. Yeah, man. Like, if for any man, too, why get married too young? Like, we talk about just regular guys. If you're between the years of 18 and 30 years old, you shouldn't get married because you're in your squire phase, like Kevin Samuel just saying. You're trying to build yourself up. You're trying to build your career. These women want a lot of high-value men or men who like a lot of money, and you're not in your bag yet. So it's like, why don't you wait to get yourself together? Unless you got a woman in college, you got someone you love, but it's like, the perfect year to start thinking about it. it's like after 30 years old when you start when you gone through the shits you bit you got to your 20s you start building on yourself and then you you're started going into the years you're getting to your prime and the wisdom you know you get to middle age and it helps out so much that's just me personally i could be off but i think that any guy any man especially today you should not think about marriage until you turn 30 post and then when you turn 30 you're gonna be like i don't know about this day let me wait a few more years yeah Ugly athletes can't turn down dives. They can't help themselves. You got that right, man. <laughs> Edwards damn near killed John Collins. He a killer, man. Yeah, he's a killer. Yeah, it says facts. Ian Devine says, Mike didn't have a jump shot at the beginning of his career. We, De Mike had a jump shot. It just wasn't the way it was at the end of his career. Mike is a career 49 to 50% shooter. Y'all gotta stop with this MJ blast me, guys. It's like, well, Mike wasn't a jump shooter. Mike could hit the jumper. It's just the fact that he wasn't hitting at a 50% clip. Hey, if Mike didn't mature his jump shot the way in his career, he's still a better jump shooter than the guys are today. Guys shooting 44% from the field, 45% from the field. It's like, he's a good jump shooter. Y'all got to stop with this MJ blasphemy here, guys. It's like, well, MJ didn't have a jumper. No, he just didn't have the fire jumper. There's a difference. MJ had a jumper. He didn't have a fire jumper. Where that if you look at his career stats, he shot 50% for his career field goal percentage with no three-point line. I mean, they had three pointers, but that wasn't the game focused on. Y'all gotta look at stuff and say, you know, no, no respect to Vine photos, but y'all, y'all need to know. We, I was, I was alive here. I was here in Chicago. We watched Mike pull up from twenty. All right, post y'all up in the post here. The hardest shot is a is a fadeaway with a dude with a forearm on your goddamn lower your back, and he over here out muscling them guys, man. Y'all sleepy on that. He what? He didn't have the fire jumper, but he had a jumper. Y'all got to go back and watch some old games. <laughs> yeah. Said, I learned the hard way not to date younger. The wrong one can throw you in tight. You got that right, man. Yeah, that key situation, Rome, that was jacked up. That was jacked up. Man, it wasn't because of layups clipped it. You ever heard the Jordan rules? The Detroit Pistons was beating Mike's ass every time he went to the hole. And other teams were beating Mike's ass, too. And what, guys, in the 80s, Mike, the Pistons wasn't the only team that was beating Mike's ass. They, every time Mike went to the hole, he was getting clobbered, man. Y'all got to stop that. <laughs> Y'all got to stop. Cleveland used to try to whip Michael's ass. I don't know how many times the Cavaliers tried to whip Michael's ass in them hard-ass fouls back in the Brad Daugherty days, the Mark Price days. Hell, even had Gerald Wallace. It was, a, was it Gerald? Uh, who was it? Uh, Gerald Wilkins. They tried to make Gerald Wilkins the goddamn Jordan stopper. Come on, man. The only thing he did was slow him to score 33 points a game. Stop playing with me. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mike, you, Kawhi Leonard is Michael reincarnated with the mid-range game. Because they ain't shoot the three-point. The mid-range game, man, 15 to 18 foot. Michael was murder. Y'all sleepy, man. Y'all sleepy. Y'all didn't watch no games. Y'all go ahead and go on ESPN and y'all read a few stats and stuff like that. Y'all didn't watch the games to see. Michael was murder from the mid-range, man. That's the reason... Name me a player who had the LeBron rule. Team, do you see any teams like we got the LeBron rules? We got the Kevin Durant rules. You know what I'm saying? Or you know who? We got the AD rules. We got the uh, the Joker rules. And Detroit Pistons created the Jordan rules, wrote a whole book on it, and every team in the NBA adopted it. And Michael was like, let me get in the weight room. Let me bulk up to around 218 to 225 so I can go ahead and take the punishment, and I'm going to throw some punishment at y'all too, man. And then you know what happened when Mike bulked up? He scored more goddamn points. <laughs> y'all sleepy, man. Yeah, no hook shots no more. People don't want to do that, man. He was he was small first year. He wasn't small. Vince be talking about. 
Mike Small, look at these guys coming in the league now, Vince. These guys are coming one year out of high, out of college, out of high school, weighing 170 pounds. Look at Kevin Durant when he came to the league. Compare Kevin Durant, his rookie year, and Mike at 21 years old after three years of college. Mike was not small, man. Come on, we got a different standard. Y'all got to go back and watch. Y'all need to go to NBA.com TV and go on YouTube, turn the volume off, and just watch. That's what y'all need to do here. Small, man, KD was twigs, okay? Come on, man. We got to stop that. <laughs> they did change the – they changed they change a lot of rules, man, but they changed the rules because everybody's getting their ass whooped. T -t 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 Guys, I didn't want to do this here. The two hand check in basketball. Mike was still scoring 30 points a game with the two-hand check. And if y'all too young to understand using defense with the two-hand check, then y'all need to shut the fuck up on that conversation. <laughs> then after the two-hand check, they allowed the one-hand check, right? Mike was still scoring 30 a game with the one-hand check. And if you don't understand defense of how a defender could easily navigate the offensive player with a one-hand or a two-hand, and then they change the rules. <laughs> it's a real lot of hand checking, but we're going to lie to put a forearm. You know how hard it is? To, uh, when you're offensive player, when someone's putting a forearm on your lower back on the post, and then if you're a damn good defender who practices, you can make the offensive player go the direction that you want to go to. But no other YouTube talks about that part of the game, right? Because y'all too young to understand two hand checks, one hand checks, and forearm checks and before they eliminate out of the NBA to let score and be easy. <laughs> Mike was still scoring 35 a game with these rules, guys. Y'all don't understand. You got guys now who are getting to get into the game here. They couldn't score no 30 points a game with them two hand checks, the physicality back then. Y'all need to watch the games and stop reading and stop looking at a few clips on TikTok. <laughs> Man, if MJ didn't retire during the first repeat, he would most likely have eight rings. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Bulls, I mean, Mike was, some, Mike was an assassin. Y'all just don't understand. Mike was, he, there, there's not too many guys like Mike, man. He was an assassin. You know, that's because out here in Chicago, like, there's never been another player before like Mike. There's never been like another like Mike. Y'all try to put my man LeBron in the picture here. LeBron, arguably, I say, is one of the second greatest players of all time. He just ain't a killer like Mike. He ain't a killer like Mike. Mike was in your head before the game even started. LeBron was to be your goddamn best friend. <laughs> I do wish if Jordan did retire, I would love to see him against Hakeem. He would have fucked up Houston. And you know what the argument is? Well, we, Houston, we beat the Bulls the regular season every year. <laughs> yeah, you know why? I, I got into argument with someone years ago. In the regular season, there's this thing, and they even say it today, there's a thing called scheduled losses. And every time, and even today, if you look at the schedule, when the Bulls go to Texas, they call it the Texas Triangle. And so every year, the Bulls, whether they're good or bad, you go back to the 80s, you go to the 90s, you go to the 2000s, the 2010s, and the 2020s. I knew my homework, and I've done this shit here, right? So the thing is, back then you had schedule losses. When you go to that Texas Triangle, you're playing Dallas, Houston, San Antonio. You're playing those three teams in five nights, not to mention the other road games with that road schedule here, right? So I'm just telling y'all, like, when you talk about, oh, Houston, they beat the Bulls. Yeah, those are what we call today scheduled losses. You're on a long-ass road trip where you're playing these teams here. You're, not, you're, you're in hotel rooms. You're traveling for two or three weeks. And part of that Texas Triangle, guys, and correct me if I'm wrong here, was also part of the quote-unquote we called the circus trip. You want to know why? Because back in the day in Chicago, we had this thing. And to Orlando, I see you in the building here. You should know about this. The Ringling Brothers and Barn and Bailey Circus used to come to Old Chicago Stadium and, of course, now the United Center. And so that was a scheduled thing every year early in the season. So the Bulls always had these long road trips because of the circus trip. So the Bulls were taking these long ass road trips early in the season where you literally had scheduled losses. So when people say, oh, Houston being the regular season, it's like, y'all just read and don't watch the damn games. <laughs> you know? So yeah. I see two Orlando came in the building. LeBron better than MJ and Kareem better than MJ too. Stop it, T Orlando. Stop it. LeBron ain't no motherfucking killer, dog. I'm sorry. Give me 14 years of Mike and six rings. I'll take the 14 and six and then the 20, 21 years of going to NBA Finals and losing. I'm sorry. I, I'd rather win the clip. Give me the six and oh.
Get me the 6-0. Michael's a killer, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> Early 80s, 2000, it was like walking death row, man. It was, man, I was watching, I was watching uh, The Last Dance. You don't see NBA fi- uh, playoff games in the 70s and 80s. It wasn't because scoring was that bad. The game was so slow in playoff games, they were just whipping each other's ass and beating each other up in the hole. Man. They let them guys play back in the day. It's not just about the scoring. They they allowed a whole bunch of forearms and kicks and all kinds of stuff. You had to be Bronk and Diesel to play back then. I mean, I don't mind the rule teams now to allow for more scoring, but it's got a little bit too extra soft. You know what I mean? Mike will be leading the league in scoring every year. And today, he lead the league in any year, Peter. There's not a year that when Mike, come on, he shot 49, 50% from the field, and he barely took like 23 pointers a season. I forgot one year, he probably took like 43 pointers. It was all mid range because he was lethal. You didn't got to shoot threes if you're shooting 50% from the field. He was the best post player on the team. You didn't need you didn't need a big low post threat when you put Mike on the block 15 off the off the elbow and then you're you're surveying the land and then as soon as you see that double team comes he either will go opposite of the double team here or he'll kick it out to the open man. Mike was the ultimate post player who was your who was your uh, your wing player. You couldn't design that any bef- betterly, guys. Yeah. Let's see here. I guarantee Jordan would have been the first person to beat the Houston Rockets super team if he came. Bar- that wasn't even a super team, Divine. They 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 won like forty five games that year. <laughs> Drexler was like in his fourteenth year. You gotta remember, Drexler got drafted. This hey guys, I'm in my NBA bag. Here. I'm a historian. By the time Drexler had got to the Rockets, Drexler had came to the league a year before Jordan eighty three. Pippen had already been in the league for over ten or twelve years by that point there, and Hakeem was old too. That wasn't no super team. Well, Barkley, I mean, I mean, not Pippen, Barkley, I mean. Barkley came in the league with Jordan, as well as Hakeem, 84 and 83. They were old as sin. <laughs> that ain't no super team. That's just a whole bunch of old cats. <laughs> you know? You know, so, it, wait, it, up here in Barkley, yeah, but come on, John Stockton? Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. Let's go on. Day spitting facts. ESPN give him a bag. Hey man, hey, I'm a historian. When it comes to it, I've 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 watched more NBA tapes than the average person growing up. I used to study the game. I, I got to be honest. I'm not trying to like pop my collar too much here. But you know how Eric Spoelstra, how he got his position, like he was the tape coordinator. They they talk about his background, how he got his start, just lower tier and watching tapes, and then he would doing all the scouting and all that stuff like that. That was me when I was younger. I I have watched. Back in, in the 80s and 90s, I can say I've watched every NBA tape that was available and over and over again because we had the VCR game and we didn't have all the TV channels we had here. So I just watched stuff over and over and over and over again, man. You know, so I mean, I'm telling I mean, the game is different now. We got a lot of dope players today. I'm not going to deny that. Like, there's more more players today who are more skill and gifted than yesteryear, but you don't have the physicality. And then also too, you don't have, I think the mental toughness of back in the day, you know, but Hey, let's see here. With all due respect, Michael six on the finals, not six on the playoff appearances. We got to count the times he didn't make it. If you're going to compare his career to a Michael didn't make the playoffs. How many times Mike didn't make the playoffs? He made it every fucking year. Except for the wizards. What are we talking about, Zick? What are we talking about? Michael's in the playoffs every year. Even his rookie year, he got his team. See, this is the funny thing, right? <laughs> it's the, that's the funny thing. Even his rookie year, we got to the playoffs. The Bulls had the third pick in the draft. If you have the third pick in the draft when Mike got drafted, you're one of the worst teams in the NBA. Mike didn't miss any playoffs. You know what I'm saying? He didn't miss no playoffs. And then the thing is, when you look at those teams, Clifton got jokes all the time. DJ, Clifton is notorious for talking about Dave Corzine. You know what I'm saying? You know, the, the, the squad that the Bulls had from 88, 84 to 87 was sucked butt at best. So he was like, well, Mike didn't get out of the first round. Man, Mike had a horrible squad. And then it was like, well, he didn't have any help to Pippen. Look at Pippen's rookie year. The dude averaged 7.9 points a game. Pippen wasn't ready his first year. By the time Pippen got to 1990, his third year, the motherfucker had migraines to get the Pistons. You know what I'm saying? People go like, oh, without Pippen, my no. 
it took those players being drafted. It took Horace Grant to grow into his own by his fourth year. It took Scottie Pippen to grow into his own by his fourth year. You drafted B.J. Armstrong in 1990 and Stacey King. So by the time they won their first championship, they were in their second year, and they were good off the bench because B.J. Armstrong was going to be the heir apparent to John Paxson. John Paxson was a decent, you know, spot-up point guard who ran, ran what you had to do. You had to get rid of Charles Oakley to get Bill Cartwright because you had Horace Grant and you couldn't have two power fours because you needed that big boy in the middle. So you traded Oakley to get Cartwright. So you, you may have downgraded a little bit because Oakley was a beast back then, but you needed a real center because you felt that Horace Grant was going to be that guy for you and you had more confidence in Horace Grant long term. So there's all these things that were building blocks. And here's the thing, guys. Mike won his first ring in year seven. <laughs> In year six, when he lost to the Pistons, it went to game seven, the Eastern Conference Finals. In 1989, they were the Eastern Conference Finals to the Pistons. And then in 88, they lost to the Pistons in the second round, and the Pistons were the champions. <laughs> and then the Pistons lost the year before that when they went to the finals, losing to the goddamn Lakers. Yeah, look at them stats, and that's history right there for you. When the Bulls lost, they either lost to the champion or the team like the Pistons, they end up losing to the eventual champion in the finals. So people will say, well, Mike didn't do this. Mike didn't do that. Mike didn't win. It's a, it was year seven. Six Eastern Conference Finals. Year five Eastern Conference Finals. Year four, he lost to the champs. Come on now. Come on. Y'all don't want to do this to me. <laughs> Y'all don't want to do this to me, man. Made the playoffs and got whipped a lot. No, he didn't. Not in the seven years. Hey, when he when the Bulls lost, who they lose to? The eventual champion, Boston Celtics. That 86 Celtics team is arguably one of the greatest NBA teams of all time. They only lost one home game. They went 40 and one in Boston Garden. Even Larry Bird said, that is Jesus with gym shoes on. Larry Bird said that. That is Jesus with gym shoes on. So when people say, well, they like Clippers, they got beat. Well, they lost to the Celtics, who were the champs. They lost to the Pistons, who were the champs, or lost to the Lakers, who were the champs. If you're losing to the team that either gets to the finals or, is, or was the champion or lost to the champion, you lost to the team that was supposed to win. You know, and then if we were going to get into it, the Bulls had a real chance in 90 if Scotty didn't have them goddamn migraines. He did not show up in game seven, and Mike was all by himself in Detroit while, while they were whooping his ass. <laughs> Y'all really want to do this with me? I'll give you stats. I'll give you games. I'll give you numbers, even though I haven't talked about this in years. Don't let me do it. I got to get to my show, man. Hey, damn, Dave. Get off the man. Jock is embarrassing. Clifton, that's all you can say when I'm spitting facts. <laughs> Try to compete with that, Clifton. I'll go ahead. I'll go down. I can still name rosters from the 80s teams. I'll give you stats in those 80s teams. I'll tell you who won the playoffs in those 80s teams, guys. It ain't off the jock. It's called facts. I'm a walking encyclopedia when it comes to 80s basketball and 90s basketball. Hell, even 70s basketball and ABA basketball, too, as well. You know I wasn't alive back then. Y'all don't want this work with me. Y'all don't want this work with me, for real. Don't. I'm not going to do it today, but if y'all really sit down and talk about real sports, stuff like that, y'all don't. I've forgotten more sports and, and, and stats and all kinds of stuff than y'all remember right now. Y'all don't want this. Your boy's OCD. <laughs> Keep preaching. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate you. Yeah. Never. They never lost to the Lakers. What the hell you drinking? Clifton, you didn't hear a goddamn word I said. I said the Pistons lost to the Lakers. When the Bulls lost to the Pistons, the Pistons eventually lost to the Lakers in the finals in 88. In 89 and 90, it was the Pistons who won the championship. So when the Bulls lost to the Pistons in 88, they, they got to the finals, but they lost to the eventual champions. You see how that works here, Clifton? You see how that works? In 89, the Bulls went to the Eastern Conference Finals when you when talking about Scotty was there in year two. Scotty was averaging like 14 points a game. He wasn't ready for the big time, as well as Horace Grant. 1990, Scotty Showcase wasn't ready for the big time in 1990. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. You saw about you be spitting, but it ain't facts. That's all you can say because it is facts. Check it out. Check it out. Go look it up. 
Y'all can rewind it back and go back. Everything here on YouTube is recorded. It's live. You can scrub back with the DVR function here. Look it up and see if I'm wrong, guys. Pull my card and everything I said in, the, in these last 20 minutes, see if I'm wrong, okay? I've done this and I've argued this and I've battled this for years. You know what I'm saying? I don't need Google. When it comes to A's basketball, I am goddamn Google. <laughs> <laughs> I'm breaking down years. I'm giving you Scotty stats. Then I I didn't know it was gonna happen. I'm telling you who played. I'm telling you, man, come on. I'm telling you who the MJ stoppers were. I'm giving you rule changes. Guys, I am the goddamn nerd who's read the last for CBA agreements, and I ain't a goddamn lawyer. That's how deep I am when it comes to this nerd shit when it comes to basketball, because I got tired of dumbass ninjas or niggas in barbershops talking shit. So you know what I said? I'm going to read the CBA so I can shut y'all ninjas down. I'm that guy, guys. In my own time, I've read the last four CBAs. I'm not lying to you. I'm, hey, next time, we're here, Orlando, I might need to hit you up because I, this going to be some legal jargon I need you to, uh, to help me out with. <laughs> Dave, you missed my point. I never said or meant that Jordan didn't make the playoffs every year. Making it to the finals, Trump's getting put out early. Say six. No, 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 no. He, when did Mike get eliminated early? His first six years. I got your point here and I'm going to kill your point. See, his first year was the 85. He got to the first round and got knocked out. 86, he had the broken foot. Y'all forget, in 86, he played only 18 games. <laughs> and let me give you all some history, too. The Bulls almost did not allow Mike to come back because Jerry Krause wanted to get a high draft pick and wanted Mike to sit the whole season. Mike was such a beast and fuck that shit, I'm healthy. Put me back in the game, went back in the game. They lost to Boston, but Boston was one of the best teams in NBA history. We can say win 40-1 and one at home that year. And then Larry Bird saying, that's Mike, that is God with Jim, with Jim shoes on. <laughs> 87, second round. 88, second round, but lost to the champions. Each time, you lose to the Pistons. Pistons went to the finals and lost. 89 and 90, Pistons were back-to-back -back champions, and the Bulls were in the Eastern Conference, East Conference Finals with Mike and no goddamn help. Then 91, year seven, Mike didn't lose no more. That's how I'm getting to my point here, Zick. After year six, when did Mike lose? 91, 92, 93, one. 94, played baseball. 95, came back, got knocked out in the second round because they didn't have no team. But when he played that full season, they came back, won another three more championships. The point is, when Mike played and when he broke through in year seven and he played a full season, he did not lose. So your point is out of here. Talking about six and no, blur the fact. No, once he broke through, he won. There was no top dog. OK, and then you might make the argument, well, Dave, he did lose in 95 to Orlando. Mike had a baseball body. He had no training camp. He was playing minor league baseball, came back for the last 17 to 20 games, whatever the case may be, with a baseball body and still was able to hang with the Orlando Magic and Shaq. But what happened that offseason, Zick? Mike had the whole offseason to transform his baseball body back to a base a basketball body. What happened? Orlando, Shaq, and Penny Hardaway got their asses swept in the Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs> so miss me with that. Miss me with that. Y'all ain't going y'all can't fight. Y'all can't battle these stats. Y'all can't battle these facts. <laughs> this is becoming a crackhead debate, Bron Sexual. Hey, man. I just, yeah, that's right, Sheila. I just said that, right. Whoops, I hate the stream yard does it. Yeah, that's what I just said here. He didn't play that full season 95. I remember that. So now you're using, it. it's not an excuse. It's a fact. He had the one injury in, in 86. He had a broke foot. That's a fact. He broke his foot. I think it was Bill Lambeer that broke his foot. <laughs> with, those, with those rules, it was Bill Lambeer that broke Michael's foot. <laughs> Speaking of the devil. <laughs> it's talking about uh, yeah i know tier line was a lawyer that's why i said that that's why i said that yeah plus jordan never went to a game seven man the only time mike went to game seven was in the was in the conference finals against the pacers and against the new york knicks that's a fact look that up 98 
six peat running on fumes. That Pacers team, that 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 Pacers team was 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 a good team. But that team in '98, and as well as the New York Knicks in '92, who was just whipping the Bulls' ass. Xavier McDaniel, Charles Oakley, Patrick Ewing, John Starks. Those were certified headhunters. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's the only time Mike went Game Seven, y'all. And you know what happened? <laughs> game Seven, Chicago Stadium. What did Mike do? Close the motherfucking show out. Come on, man. Stop playing with me, man. Y'all don't want this here. Dave killed this debate. No effort. Y'all don't want this. This is easy. This is light work for me. I, 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 I'm leaving a whole bunch of shit in the chamber. Y'all don't want this work. I got to get to the show. I'm leaving so much in the chamber. Y'all don't want me to spit. Y'all think I'm spitting. I ain't even spit yet. I just gave y'all some first grade knowledge I got here. Don't make me go into the bag of the third and fourth, fifth grade high school knowledge. That was first grade spitting. Uh, as a Pistons fan, I'm pleading the pleasing the fifth. I hear you, man. What's going on, Kelvin? I get to the show. That dude, what's up, man? Stevie Wonder back in with a new what? Back with a new body. They must be blind, but boy, you you but you can see shit. What are you talking about? I'm not Stevie Wonder. What are you talking about, man? Stevie Wonder got a bald ass head, man. What the fuck you talking about, man? Stevie Wonder bald as hell. <laughs> My hair grown to this day. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. What are you saying here? Dave is tribal chief, not Rogan Reigns, not Roman Reigns. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Pinball says, you're live on Sports Talk with TD and D. Man, y'all don't, I mean, guys, I, I, this is nothing for me. I'm telling you, I had, back in the day, I had every single NBA tape that the NBA released. From the 80s until the 90s, when Sports Illustrated released the tapes, the best dunkers of the NBA, you know, regular season tapes, whatever, whatever the NBA released, I owned it and I watched it a million times. And then, of course, I was an avid uh, card collector, so I used to read all the stats and understand that. And then I watched every single goddamn game. Dude, man, I'm telling y'all, y'all, just, and then there's so much more to it as well, but y'all don't want this work. Y'all don't want this work. Y'all don't want it. Because, know what, though? There's a good chance I know your own team stats better than you. <laughs> so I remember the Cleveland Cavaliers when they had uh, Mark Price and Craig Elo and uh, Brad Daugherty, and then they added Gerald Wallace to the mix, man. That Yo, Cleveland Cavaliers had a whip back then. I never forget the Cavs. The Knicks had a whip back then with Starks and Oakley and Charles Xavier and uh, the Hubert Davises of the world, man. Come on, man. The Indiana Pacers back then, especially the late Pacers in the 97, 98, and during that time period, 98, when Burr became the coach, when they got, they added Chris Mullen. I put, did they have Detlef Shrimp still then? You had Jalen Rose. Man, they, they had a whip too back then. I don't maybe go and start naming y'all squads and talk about y'all team stats and how y'all was murking other teams as well. It ain't just, this ain't a bull's mind here. It's the 80s and 90s NBA mind. Come on, man. <laughs> yes, yeah. Hoops, Fleer, Skybox. Don't make me a hey, Mondo. I, I, before my dad passed away, he brought all my trading cards like to collect there. I have complete sets from 1988 to like 1995 of Hoops, Skybox, Fleer, you name it. I got them all over there, man. That was our thing back in the day as a shorty, man. Yeah. Plus, Jordan T's never went to a game sign. Yeah, that's what I was just saying earlier. Like, never. Hey, game six is all it took. Hey, you didn't get to game seven. Mike closed your ass out. All right. Mike closed you out. If Mike was up three, two, hey, man, it was a wrap. That was that was the easy bet. That was an easy Vegas bet. That was an easy Vegas bet, man. I know Reggie Miller, Sheila. I know. Hey, but he, he was cold, though. Hey, I could stand Reggie, but he was cold, man. I got to give credit where credit's due. He a little overrated, but he was cold, you know. The Milwaukee Bucks, tall and grumpy asses, gave us fits with the Cavs. Yeah, the Bucks were okay in the 80s up until like 84. You know what I'm saying? Then they were like, ugh. You know, they had their little run in the mid early 90s when they y'all dropped the big dog. Shout out to Gary, you know. <laughs> shout out to, you know, shout out to big dog. You know, he came in there, and then y'all had Ray Allen and Sam Cassell. See, I, I, I know y'all squads. I know when Big Dog dropped 30 point, three points a game with Purdue in his in his junior year before uh, Milwaukee drafted him. Big Dog was a beast back then. You, you hey, don't make me start talking about y'all squads. 
<laughs> Hold on to the sets, Dave. Mine's got stolen, unfortunately. Oh, I got them, man. I got them. I mean, yo, they're they're all there. I got to go through them all, man. That that's just basketball, football, and baseball. Football, all three sports, man. I was in it. I was in it, man. Let's see here. By the way, Jordan didn't make the playoffs to the Wizards. I guess that don't count. I, don't, I mean, here's the thing. I, I'll throw you this bone. It counts. I guess he played, but it really doesn't count to a degree. It, I know it's like that's that's hypocritical, Dave, but let's just keep it a buck here, right? Mike did what he did because he wanted ownership of the Wizards. And he wanted to play, and he what, what he wanted to do was build the Wiz organization and do some goodwill to bring the fans out. So when he played those two years, he goes to the front office. Washington ate Paul and screwed his ass. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, no, nah, Mike, you could be GM, but you ain't getting no, you ain't gonna get a per-. he wouldn't even give Mike four percent ownership. He wouldn't give no Usher. Usher owned like two percent of the Cleveland Cavaliers. A Poland wouldn't even give Michael that. <laughs> so it counts, you can say, but Michael had retired in '98. And his ass came back in four years later. Now, I'm going to say this here. Let LeBron retire for four years and see how good he is. We're not talking about him playing in year 21. Let's see him retire and then come back the same age like he's doing with Mike. Like, let's say that, let's say it's 2024 now. Let LeBron retire back in 2020 with that bubble championship, right? When they won the bubble and he come back this year. And tell me how good how good LeBron will be. You can't take four years off of the NBA and think you're going to be still the best. And Michael still averaged over 24 a game. And I believe he played 80 games in one season. The dude, the, the Michael in those two years of the Wizards plays more game than LeBron now. <laughs> and his best player was Jerry Stackhouse or Rip Hamilton. Come on. They're good players. But real talk here, guys. Come on. Rip Hamilton or Jerry or Jerry Stackhouse. Come on, guys. Stop playing. Stop playing with me. I don't respect Reggie Miller. That prejudice turned down, turned what prejudice town burned down his estate. He's a Hall of Fame, a sucker forever for that. I hear you that, man. I mean, there's a part that Reggie's overrated, but you know, he's a good player. I hear you on that. I hear you on that. Portland was fit. Drexler was fitted. All right, guys. I know I went on. I didn't. That, that wasn't supposed to happen, y'all. Yeah, we started talking and just kind of went down the rabbit hole here, man. Shout out to y'all here. Hold on, I'll make sure I ain't got no uh, cash apps here before. Hold on, give me one second, guys. Let me see here. What the hell is this? Oh no, this is nothing. I thought it was on seventy something. Okay, y'all don't want the sports talk. I mean, we could do the sports talk on the weekends. But if y'all really want to debate me on this here, I don't know if y'all, this is just off the dome. I just read something in the chat and I just started spitting. It, you know what, guys? The one thing you don't want to do with me is let me prepare for a sports debate. <laughs> y'all don't want that with me. <clears throat> y'all don't want that. It was off the dome. I said so on, I saw in the chat here and then that was it. And then y'all came with y'all comments. This was fun, guys. Shout out to y'all. Shout out to the chat. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. We're going to get into it right now, but shout out to y'all, man. Mono says that was fire, Dave. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that. Facts. Ran a Viper last year that made me feel like I was standing still. Found out he had 1,900 wheel horse I was hurt. Frank Green. Hey, hey, Rome. I, I, I know some Nissan GTRs that'll put your vet to shame. I know a dude who got a 1,300 horsepower GTR. That is un, it's unreal. He, whoop, whoop my BMW's ass and whoop your vet in a heartbeat. <laughs> I have no debate. You actually know that. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah, so, guys, I, I, here's the thing, guys. For weekends going forward, like, if y'all want to have, like, a sports conversation, shoot me the email. If y'all show up, though, just think about it. I'm not going to do it for, like, five, ten people. You know what I mean? But if y'all want to have some sports debates, man, hey, man, let, we can do that here. But you see that was off the dome. Don't let me prepare. The whole idea of this exercise, shout out to the replay gang. And shout out to the Ninja Watchers and everybody in the AIC. But one thing I'm telling you is don't let me prepare for a debate when it comes to sports. When it comes to basketball, when it comes, I'm telling you, I can go back to 70s. I can, you saw me just do a quick snapshot of the 80s. We'll do the 90s, the 2000s, the 2010s. I know the rule changes. I know the goddamn CBA. Guys, I told you this before, before we get to the show here. I, the barbershop I used to go to and a whole bunch of dumbass ninjas would tell me all kinds of stuff that wasn't true. Like, I used to have debates about goddamn signing trades. <laughs> and it was the one CBA where that they basically eliminated signing trades. 
And I and at that time, I didn't read the CBA, but I knew for a fact there's like two or three signing trades like in the last like three seasons. I mean, it basically was eliminated during this time period. And all these guys in the barbershops were saying, yeah, Dave, you can do this. This happened in the past. I'm like, just because it happened in the past doesn't mean it happened now. You can't do signing trades. Man, I went back. I Googled it. I read the whole CBA. I found out about the 120% rule, the luxury tax, and you're going over and over the salary cap and over the luxury tap teams and how these teams couldn't do this with these parameters at 100%, 105 It got to math. It got to legal jargon. And I was like, oh, wow, that's why these trades ain't happening, right? That's why you don't see the situation happen. You got these teams here that can only trade with these teams here because during that time period, not only if you were over the cap, over the luxury tax, you couldn't trade to a sign and trade with a team under the salary cap. There's two levels that you have the salary cap that was below, then you hit the salary cap, and then you hit the luxury tax. I was learning all this. Stuff. I was like, no wonder we couldn't do that trade. Then it's like, no wonder Portland couldn't make that move, or no wonder the Clippers couldn't do that move here. It's a completely restrictive rule here right now. And I'll never forget, I came back to the barbershop, and once again, some janky ass sign and trade talk. <laughs> So then I had to go ahead and pull the goddamn card and say, hey, you know what, guys? I'm sick and tired of this bullshit here. This is not happening, and because of why. I shut the whole barbershop down, and that's one reason why my nickname was Dave Dash, because I dashed y'all goddamn sports dreams. <laughs> y'all thought you were going to come to the barbershop and talk to and he's like, this is a nerd. He ain't funny. And then I gave y'all facts, and y'all shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, guys. All right. All right. Hey, Jerk, this is the way the game goes, man. Sorry, man. I lied. I got over like 800 videos. We can navigate off topic, man. That happens. <laughs> hey, that happens, man. I, I got to give the people what they want from time to time. Sometimes we pivot and have some conversations like that, man. <laughs> you know, that's the way the game goes every now and then. Rome says, man, I'll be in my car quiet as hell coming back to the racers meeting after taking the L. <laughs> those aren't fair cars oh yeah what i was talking about earlier okay guys enough uh enough sports talk y'all don't want this michael jordan talk y'all don't want this michael jordan talk guys y'all don't want this 80s talk i i can debate your own team i can debate your own team whoever's y'all squad in the 80s and 90s y'all don't want it i could debate your own team you can make an argument against your own team and i can make an argument for your team that's how much NBA basketball I used to watch, except for the Vancouver Grizzlies back then <laughs> and the early Toronto Raptors. <laughs> After that, and even then, Damon Stoudemire was a goddamn beast. See, I got to stop here. I'm about to go in. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all ready for the show? Press one. Y'all ready for, y'all ready to get into a press one. I need ones in the building. Y'all ready to get into it. Where my ones at? Come on now. I'm not starting till I get some ones in the building. I gave y'all some sports talk, you know, and then y'all y'all ran and hid after I started giving y'all stats. <laughs> Got a little quiet here in the chat. <laughs> y'all know y'all can't type and type. That's yeah. Y'all don't want that work. You see, I already talked about that, Derek. The the Rockets couldn't fuck with the Bulls. Like I said, I already went into that. It's called schedule season. It's called regular season schedule losses. We already talked about that. We already talked about that. The only argument you can say is, who going to guard a king? You thought that Vernon Maxwell was going to guard Michael Jordan? <laughs> Derek, you thought that Kenny the Jet Smith was going to guard Michael Jordan? <laughs> as much as everybody going to say, well, you couldn't stop a king. No one could stop Michael. You really thought that Vernon Mad Maxwell and Kenny the Jet Smith was going to stop MJ? Stop playing with me about them goddamn Houstons. Jurgen, I don't care if it's for an hour, man. I don't care. It's my channel, brother. I love you and everything like that. But, the hey, I got over 800 videos. Every now and then, we might veer off from the path. I do four or five-hour live streams, man. Calm down over there. Calm down. Lord have mercy. Uh, the bronze sections, I know. There's some ones here. All right. Yeah, I don't want that, man. You're going to talk about the Houston. Man, I, I, man the, the number one argument is Mad Max and Kenny the Jet Smith. Y'all lost because of that right there. Both of them combined couldn't get, wouldn't even put 20 against Jordan. Oh, man. 
<laughs> the Dave Show. This is the norm. Hey, man, it happens, man. Just because I got a title, you know, and think, you know, the chat happens like that. Hey, man, it's fun every now and then to have these kind of debates. We'll get to the show. Don't worry. I've been here for two years. We having fun, man. Okay. Okay. He's hungry for Dick Nanigans. I know y'all love the Dick Nanigans. I know y'all do. I don't claim Houston. I'm from Perlin. <laughs> okay, okay, Frank. <laughs> you had to put a laughing emoji on that. I get you, man. I get you. I get you. Okay, guys. So, yeah, we did that. See, y'all, see, that talk right there, that lets you know what my bag is. I have a couple of bags. As we're getting into no less than 500K, she got a six-month-old, for crying out loud. That's fucking crazy, guys. You know what I'm saying? Otis Thorpe. Man, that's a wash. Otis Thorpe against Horace Grant. Horace Grant would have won that matchup. Give me a young Horace Grant in the playoff spot in. After, you know, after the fact that Horace had got three championships and had that championship medal, y'all underestimating that championship mentality because the Rockets got their championship blocks because the Bulls walked away. Otis Thorpe would either have been a wash or Horace Grant would have took his ass out, man. I'll get into that another time. What's going on, Arvin? Thank you. Y'all got to look at the individual matchups. And the one-on-one -on -one is you got Keem is 1A and Michael's 1A. But the thing is, you can double-team a Keem. You know, he might get his, but Eric Bosick is going to fall in the place. Who the hell is going to stop Scotty? You got to remember that, too. Who's going to guard Scotty? What, Robert Ory? I know he plays a four, but he had been guarding Horace Grant and Scotty. All right. Y'all see here, that's my bag. That's one of my bags. I, I'm a man of many things that have immersed myself into many things in my life in these 44 years. And you can see how excited and how animated I am, but also the enthusiasm that I have regarding sports, but also my love for 80s basketball. Cause that's what I grew up in. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a true eighties baby. I, I was born in 1980. So, you know, that's my bag. I lived through it. I watched it. I never forget one of the things that my dad told me before I passed away, before he passed away, we were at the golf course and we were talking about boxing and I'm just going to, I'm saying this before I get to the show. So you guys understand it here. What's going on T Lee? One thing, just so you guys understand how I move here. We were finished the back nine and was going to start hole 10. And I, we were talking, and my dad just looked at me, and he had this look on his face like confusion. It was like amazement, but confusion at the same time. He was like, I talk to my guys at work, and I just can't understand how much you know about basketball and boxing. And so I, I, he said, I just got to ask you, what, what, what made you get into it so much like that here? Like, you just know so much about it, Dave. Never forget my dad saying he was sitting in the golf court. I stand him. I said, Dad. Because of you. He was like, what? I said, dad, you don't understand. Like you used to work midnights. So you'd be like, you were my hero. You know, like you, you worked and you was my coach, but there was with your schedule, you'd be sleep at night at times. So you may not have realized that though. So there'll be many times when you have been home and I'd be watching the game of you and you would fall asleep. But I used to adore that time because even though you were asleep, you were home and I was next to you. So it was like I was next to my dad. You know, it was that even though he was asleep, that was like my family bonding time. And so I said to myself as a kid, if dad like watching this, I got to love this. Ain't that kind of funny how kids, you know, react to their parents like that or adults in their life? Like I told him, I was like, dad, you know, like you used to love this stuff. This is what you watch. So me as a kid, I'm saying if this is what you watching, this is what I got to love because you're dad. And because this is what you're doing, this is what I got to do. And I never forget, he looked at me and he just like, it, 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 it threw him off for a second because I gave him, he didn't realize that was a compliment because he loved boxing and basketball, but I took it to another level. But I took it to another level because my love for the sport was navigating because that's what he liked to watch. And that was the time that we would spend together even when he falls asleep before he had to go to work at night. So when you guys hear me animated, and I'm talking in my bag about certain things that I like and I care about, it's because of my dad. And that is a huge thing when say a father's matter, especially black dads, especially in our space here, guys, because if I didn't have my dad in my life, I'd know I ain't the man I am. 
I mean, I probably, you know, I know the person I, I would have succeed. What's going on, Trail Hill? Good to see you. I know that there have been some things that I know that the person I am and how I'm moving been successful, but I don't truly believe I am not where I'm at mentally. I am not where I'm at physically without not having the presence of a black father in the household, someone who was stern, who was strict, but at the same time gave me leeway and showed me love the way a father's supposed to love their son. So when I get in my bag, guys, and I want you to understand that I'm animated or I'm expressing myself, or even when I go through my stats and I'm going off the dome like that, all of that was triggered because my dad was 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 the was the jumping point. My dad was the catalyst. And that is the thing that I like to talk about here in this channel here when we deal with these modern women and we're talking about dating and how black men don't matter or a man can only do nothing for me about money and things like that as we get to these videos. But I talk the way I do to showcase fathers do matter. Men do matter. Because you have no idea how that young boy is going to grow up and how just those moments when, fellas, you may not think you're spending time with your kids. You could be falling asleep on a sofa like my dad is before he went to work. But the fact that he was there, I cherish those moments. And, and you have no idea, guys, about your kids and how they feel about you like that. And even if you're not doing anything, the fact of the presence of being there is so much. And so that is where I drive a lot of my opinions when things could be so, you know, so outlandish, you may say, or, you know, I'm really running and talking 100 miles an hour, but it showcases. And some of y'all in the chat can appreciate that. And some of y'all understand this too as well, that if you had your black daddy in your life, you had your father in your life, right? And then if you really look back at certain moments, how that changed the course of how you are now today compared to these women that we're going to talk about these videos here who are they looking for the high value man or they're looking for this guy here but they have crazy ask they you know they're they, they go ahead and do crazy things and expect the top tier guy now i understand that there's certain dynamics where someone may say dave who are you to say certain things are not here and there could be some things that i know i could be wrong on i understand you know, but there are items that I see that today is so much different from yesteryear. And even though life is like a rerun, you know, we play things over and some things are the same. Hey, some things are also different as well. You know, so that's what, you know, when I when I get in, when I get in my bag and I start talking like that, I want you guys to understand it's not just me, even though I do take credit for learning the information, but it's also an extension of William Jordan. And I got to make sure that I show love to William Jordan every time I get the chance here because y'all wouldn't rock with me without William Jordan. Rest in peace, pops. So, yeah, though, so I said all that to say we're going to get to the show here now. We're going to get to the first video. You already pressed the ones here as we transition and pivot now to the real show at hand. You know, we had a good sports conversation. Frank says, I'm grateful for my pops. Even if we don't always uh, get along, I would have been dead or in jail about him. That's that's a that's that that's a bar there, Frank. <laughs> Yeah. And so that is the one thing that if anything that I want you guys to get out of my channel is that I am all about the black man in the household. I'm about the black father in the household. I am about nuclear relationships and how, you know, I get it how young people want to have a good time, you know, and they're they live in their life. But playing house or the situationships and these type of relationships where that you're able to act like you're in a relationship, but you're not and things of that nature. And we're seeing how that has added some part of the destruction of the black household and the black family, you know. We may have jokes, we may be clowning things of that nature, but we're living in a in a seismic situation here that is really breaking us down compared to other cultures. Now, we got a lot of great black people doing great things here, but it could be so much better. And so that's what I like to point out here. And maybe in a comedic way, sometimes it may be harsh, but it comes from a great place, though, because I know what success looks like. And a lot of these women are not moving successful routes. I'm not saying you date a guy like me. What I'm saying is that the mentality, the way you ladies are moving, you know, or you're maybe you got girlfriends that's moving a certain type of way. It explains why you're keep messing with Pookie. 
You keep messing with Ray Ray. You keep messing with Nug Nug or Dusty Daryl and them. And then after you have them in your lives and you drop a couple of babies by them, then you say, I deserve a Dave or I deserve a Mike or I deserve a Steve who's doing well. And what we're pointing out is that, yes, there may be a few simps that's going to take you on, but we are seeing the divorce race that you guys don't want simps. You may want his salary. You may want, you know, what he provides, but you're not in love with him. You're not seeing the unconditional uh, resources and, and love that's being provided. So as I say all this here, we're going to get to the first video here, guys. Let me just make sure I'm not locking up here. Give me one second here. Give me one second here. Okay. So. Normally, what I like to do with these videos here, like I like to build up to like the titles here, but you want to know something here? The first few videos, we getting right into it. I'm not going to give you some other joints. We getting right to the title of today's live stream here. We're going to react to 500,000 or and the six month old. We got other videos too. And, I, and some of y'all's fan subscriber, you know, I, I, I got to take that back. I don't have fans. I don't want none of you guys to say, Dave, I'm a fan of yours. No, I don't want not one motherfucking fan. I need supporters. I need y'all to support me because I rock with y'all too as well. So as we get to this first video here, I'm blind reacting, guys. Blind reacting. So once again, so let's get into the first video. I'm going to take the, the scroll ticker off the bottom there, right? If you guys want to support the Cash App, you guys know it's in the description box below. Super chat, super thanks, super stickers, and everything like that. So Manny Jones says, happy Father's Day. I grew up with a great dad in the house. Salute to you, Manny. Yeah. Sheila says, my dad was the Latino version of Red Foreman of the 70s show. I like that, Sheila. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like that there. Uh, let's see here. So guys, here's the first video. We're going to rock now. Y'all ready for Dick Nanigans? <laughs> Some of y'all are like, Dave, you talk as much about sports. Hey, that's, hey, I need y'all to stand here right now. If you rock with me, you got to accept me for everything I am. If you can't accept everything I am, then there's a problem. You got to know that every once in a while, we might have a little sports tangent. Every once in a while, we might have some little car talk. I understand that we talk about relationships and pop culture and current events here and things of that nature. But if you guys are going to accept me and know how I get down here, you got to know what actually I like and what ticks. And every once in a while, we might get derailed. You know, but here's the thing, though. I got over 800 videos to know tomorrow's live stream. I may not even talk about not one blur sports and get straight to the reaction videos. What I'm saying here is if you rock with me, if you rock with me, if you don't mind a 40, 50 minute derail, then, hey, it's cool. If you guys don't like it, then you can leave and then come back when we get to the video. You know what I mean? But it, you guys got to accept me for who I am. This is my channel. This is YouTube here. And the cool thing is when you have your own channel, you can do what you want. Now, I don't go ahead and do like 500 sports videos. And I'll kill my algorithm. But. But, you know, every once in a while, if we do a 25, 30-minute sports talk, come on, guys, rock with, me. rock with me. Okay? Yeah. So, let's get into it now. First video, where we're acting. It's, it's Super Chat Thursday. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To show y'all love in the Supers here. And you can't do that. Get the likes up here. You know what I mean? So, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Ooh. Who we got on the screen here? Who we got on the screen? Y'all ready? I know I'm ready. So let's get into it. Hey, what you got going on over here, girl? I just, I, I literally just washed my hair and slicked my hair down. <laughs> okay, so you washed it and I was it. What the hell? What are you doing? You molding it? It's a no. No, you can't see her. I um just watch it out. I'm gonna get up in the morning and curl it up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Give me some light, baby. All right. Thank you, Priscilla. Priscilla Ann said she prayed for me. Thank you, Priscilla Ann. <laughs> All right, give me some light, girlfriend. <laughs> what we got going on over here? What's your name, baby? Alexis. Alexis. Alexis, where you call me from, love? Bad Baton Rouge, Louisiana? Yes. <laughs> Louisiana L's. I am 31. Okay, that's the best life you got? 
All right, hold on. I'm going in the bathroom, baby. Baby, baby, baby. Now, Alexis, they gonna talk about you with a scarf on your head. You don't care? No, no I don't. <laughs> this is weak. Ain't nothing but a word. Ain't nothing. You you ain't say nothing but a word for a like. See, Kendra's gonna go try to like, you know, yeah. I think Kendra's be sneak dissing at this point right now. Like, ladies, what is in your goddamn minds? That if you looking for a guy and you coming off a scarf on your head looking like who shot John, like we have gotten to the point of so much disrespect here. And we say, Dave, we talk about disrespect here. If you want a man, we all know if the first impression is the biggest impression, right? So if you're going to come on on a public platform that's going to be seen by hundreds and thousands of people and the goal is to find a man, why would you do everything possible so that guy's going to say, I'm straight, Dave. Or, goddamn, Dave. Or, is she fucking serious, Dave? <laughs> like, women have no problem dogging guys out saying, oh, you look broke. Look at your shoes. Look at your hair. You need a haircut. Look at your shirt. You look busted, right? But then when women do the same thing, you know what they say? Take me as I am, Dave. Like, what? You won't take me as I am. I got to come A1 here, and then you can come on here with a goddamn scarf on somebody just walk out the shower. How about this here? Get yourself cleaned up, and then come on another show another day. Oh, my God. Let's continue, God. This is already starting off bad. Texas. Nah. It is. It is. All right. Alexis, we're actually good. If you can, can you bring the camera down? A little bit. We just see a little bit of the ceiling. Okay, there we go. But I, you was good though, so don't change it too much. Okay. I don't want your head cut off. All right. All right. Okay. Exactly, we got Devon. Alexis Baton Rouge, Louisiana, thirty-one. You have any children? I have two. How old are your two kids? How old are your two kids? Um, um, I have a four-year-old and I have a six-month-old. <laughs> are they both the same? Why are you not with this man? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Before she even answers this question. That got to be one. There's two of the biggest red flags of all time. When Kendra asked the question, you know, name three things you need to work on yourself, right? And they can't name that. So I always say, we'll, we'll get to it. I don't know what she's going to say. But I always say, if you can't name three things to work on yourself, then you're overall one big ass red flag. Because every one of us should be able to name off one, two, three, four, five things just like that. We're not perfect. None of, none of us here has no flaws. So we should be able to name our shits, right? But then here's the other big thing here. You got a kid under a year old, and not just under a year old, six months old. There should be no circumstance, fellas, that you dating a chick who got a six-month-old. That's just real talk here. That's, that's messy. He got a daddy. She's going through the nurturing phase. You got you got an infant slash going into toddler status and everything. This, she's a she, you're basically a stay at home mom to a degree, I guess. Unless you know you may have run out of PTO time, you got to get back to work after four months, four or five, whatever the case may be. But if you just had a kid within the year, fellas, if that ain't your baby mama and that ain't your wife, you shouldn't be talking to her. That is all kinds of problems waiting to happen. Let's see what she's going to say why she ain't with the guy that she just had a baby with six months earlier. Let's cook. We've been together too long. What? Well, you had a baby six months ago. When did you break up? Before I found out I was pregnant. So you went through the whole pregnancy and y'all wasn't together? We was messing around, though. What? Y'all was still having sex. So why not just be <laughs> <with your child laughs> Two Scorpios can't be together forever. Why you keep giving me up a job? You keep hearing this fucking bullshit here. I don't care if this channel, this video game. This video's got demonetized already, guys. All right. So I'm gonna need y'all supers here, right? What kind of shit are we dealing with here, guys? This is what we gotta deal with here. 
she got pregnant by the guy. And also that's the father of the four year old. She's going to say we were basically broken up, but she's still having sex with him. Guys, this is what I'm talking about here. When you're dealing with someone who got kids this young here, because you got to deal with the fact that they still having sex together. And then what is her thing? We were together too long, Kendra. Oh, you can't have two store Scorpios together. <laughs> I am not hearing anything credible to say I'm still sleeping with a man I don't want to be with anymore unless you really want to be with him and you're hoping he changes. Or you could be the problem and you ain't changing. Either or here, this is some bad nigga nomentry. This is some bad nigga dumb. This is a nigga moment. Oh, let's get back into it, guys. Vagina and kids if you can't be with him. That's why I left him alone. Got the tool side. Got the tool side. So you so you left him alone. What? The tool side. So now you want to find a new man? Yes. And you don't want to have, have your new man's child. I don't want no, no more kids. No, no more kids. No more kids. No more kids. Let me find out more about you, Alexis. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not working. <sighs> And that's because my overhead went out of my truck. So I'm waiting to get another truck so I can start back working. Now, Alexis, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm going to give you a chance if you want to proceed. Now, Kendra Cousins, and I got to be honest too, do you feel like you're in a position to start day and you have a four-year-old, a six-month-old, and you're not working? This is the moment you want to meet a man? Tell me why you want to meet a man right now when you got so many things that you can be focusing on. I mean, I don't know. It ain't like you got to help me pay bills or be a daddy to my kids. How, how, I want a daddy for my You ain't got to help with bills, Tribe, because you want to know something? We the taxpayers is paying her lifestyle. She ain't working. Her car engine fell out. And when you say, well, ain't like you got to help me out of any money, guys, I get it. But this is what we're talking. You want to date something like this here? This, this is the low vibration that y'all ninjas is, is going to get her pregnant again, where she's going to have two baby daddies for three different kids. I see that in her future. Oh, I forgot. She got her tubes tied. So at least she got her tubes tied, at least for crying loud. So I mean, take that back here. But right, Rome, our taxes is paying for this fuck shit. And I'm sick and tired of it. I know some women need help. But do you see the mentality that we're dealing with here? You can't have Scorpios together. Oh, I should have left them a long time ago. Our taxes is paying this lifestyle. Make it make sense. How, how are you paying your bills? Well, I own my house. Okay. How are you on your house? So I just got light, light bill and water bill. So where are you getting money from? How do you own your house? I mean, I'm I have to do hair and what? watch kids. What? Like, it's okay. always the hustle. Okay. Y'all hear so this? There's something I talk about often on the show when I say single season. Single season is when you decide you are not dating because you got other things to focus on. So we can proceed, Alexis, if you want to. I'm a, it's going to be your decision. But my personal suggestion for you, you got a six-month-old baby. You got a four-year-old child, and you're currently not working. I think you could be focusing on bettering your life in a lot of different ways. But if you feel as though you want to meet a man right now, it's your call. I do. Okay. I gave my disclaimer. Let's continue. That's why. All right. I ain't so, no public this, this, this way, baby. What? Say what? I ain't no public this way. Somebody in the comments said public assistance. I ain't no public assistance. Everything over here is owned. Okay. I'm sorry. People be lying out they assholes. I would love to believe that she owns her house. But just from the short moment, and here's the thing, all of us could be wrong here. But from the short time that we've seen her, does she gives us any kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, 
any kind of resemblance of someone who was financially savvy, someone who worked their ass off early on, and then they got to the bag and paid their house off, and then got with Nug Nug, and now she ain't working. I'm sorry. I see ninjas lying all the goddamn time. And the way that you moving, you... <sighs> If she owns a crib, I'd be like, good. That'd be dope. I just, I have a hard time believing this tribe. I really do. I Because re you want to know something? How many people really own their homes? People got mortgages. I talk about being debt-free. I told you guys how I stopped. I, I, I stopped. I was about to buy a $100,000 truck. I said, no, fuck that truck. I'm about to go use that money to pay the damn house off. <laughs> That's what I'm about to do here. We're going to get this house paid off in no time. Why buy a $100,000 Benz truck when I can take that 100000 and put that to the crib so I have it paid off? You know what I'm saying? But her energy, and I, I'm judging the book by its cover. I know I am. But we're looking at tattoos on the chest. She comes on with a hair and bonnet on her head. She got a kid that's six months old. She was still banging baby daddy and talking about we're broken up and talking about Scorpios. And you really want us to believe you owned your house. If I'm wrong, I'll be happy to be wrong, but I'm sorry. I don't believe you. Let's get back to the video. Okay, okay. So no section eight. If we turn no section eight. Down. Hey, I own it. I own it. He owns it. Okay. What's the zodiac sign? Damn zodiac. I'm, I'm a Scorpio. Wait a minute. Another question. When she talk about what you do for money, I do hair every now and then. I watch some kids. She didn't say, well, you know, before I got pregnant, you know, I had a career working in HR. I worked in IT where I'm a, I'm a former doctor or whatever it is that I'm doing here or whatever the case may be. She never said that. That's why I questioned the home ownership unless grandma died and she took grandma's house. Right. So. That's the reason why I'm questioning here, because normally when people talk about they work, we're prideful in our careers. Like, even if you're dope at doing hair, you're not going to say I do hair from time to time. You can be like, yo, I do locks. I do braids. I even got clippers and I can cut you dudes hairs up as well. So I'm going to get back to the video, guys. I know I stopped it real fast here, but I'm just having a hard time believing you own your crib when you say I do a little bit of hair now and then I can watch your kids. That don't sound like st stacking a lot of money to own a crib. Unless grandma died and you moved in. Or how about this here? Grandma's still alive. Grandma is in the other room and y'all don't see her. And grandma got the house paid and y'all, you stay in there with your kids. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. I had to get that off my chest, guys. I could be wrong. And I can own I could be wrong here. But eh, the math ain't math. -ing. The math ain't math. -ing. Okay. Um, Alexis, I can tell you the fight. I don't want no problems. Um, Alexis, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 31, Scorpio, mom of two kids, a four-year-old, six-month-old, by the same man, never married, correct? No. Oh, you've been married? Currently not working. Oh, never been married. What so kind of man are you looking for, girl? I'm looking for a man that could, like me, could still stand during hard times. Like, just because I'm not working, that don't mean I can't get my business done. You still have to be able to take care of your business. I like a man that's not friendly. I don't like the friendly ones. I like, I like a man to be able to. I could, I could bring you to meet my daddy. If I can't bring you to meet my daddy, I can't meet you. I can't be with you. Okay. Now, can I just ask you an opposite question of that? What do you think a man's mother would say about you? Mm. Now she might feel some. She might have something to say because I'm not working at the moment. But I haven't been out of work for a year. I haven't been out of work forever. What do you do for it's work just, then? Make me wrong. Out in my Make me wrong. I'm not working. You also might want to say something about you having a six month old child and a four year old child too. Mm-hmm. Only thing I can say today was. I wasn't like other people. I didn't have kids. I didn't have kids young. I waited. That's the only thing I can say about that. So you got to, you want a man that will get your daddy's approval. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me ask this question here. 
Why didn't you get your daddy's approval of your baby daddy that you don't want to be with right now? Why are you getting your daddy's approval? Now, I appreciate you going to do that now, but why you didn't do that with the guy that you don't want to be with? You had a babe, two babies with him one six months ago. I find it how we're moving ass backwards here. You want daddy's approval. Did daddy approve of your baby daddy? I'm, I'm just kind of curious here. I'm just kind of curious. I'm just kind of curious, y'all. Um, what are your deal breakers? Somebody smoked me a one. No way, fellas. Always in the streets. Um, somebody that don't take care of their kids. That was my deal breakers. Okay. All right. What about we gotta look a certain way? Looks. I like. Tall skinny dudes. Oh Lord. How do we know? How do we know? How do we know? Um, how do we know? If you got for us, huh? Smile for us. Okay, you do You got nice teeth. Now, now Alexis. You gotta be tall and skinny. I like the tall skinny dude. I never been with the older man besides the tall skinny dudes. Also, your your children's dad is tall and skinny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you want the opposite of you. Yeah. I probably would give it a try. I just never had it. Never had it. Okay. Fair enough. What about money? Do we got to make a certain amount of money? I don't care about as money. Long T got long T able to make some money. Now let's okay. Let's just don't got no income requirement now. Okay. Um, could he have kids already? He can have, have kids, but I feel like uh oh, your your child has to be older than my four year old. What? Now what? Like, I'm, I'm trying. What? You know, I'm trying with you, but all you want is that wait. I before Kendrick, do you hear this? This is what we're talking about here, guys. You want the opposite of you and the opposite of you. you your baby daddy could be tall and skinny. He sound like Pookie, right? That's why you said all the things that you said. I don't want a guy in the streets. I don't want a guy smoking weed because your Pookie ass baby daddy probably in the streets smoking weed and doing all these things here, right? You don't want, you are overweight and you big, but you want a skinny dude. And they, oh my God, guys. This is, this is what we're talking about here. This is what we're dealing with here. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. She could get this, but it's going to be pokey. Let's just remember this here. I'm not saying she can't get a man. She just ain't getting the good man that she thinks she deserves. <laughs> she can get a tall, skinny dude. It's just going to be pokey. There's a whole bunch of tall, skinny pokies. Bless her heart. Lord have mercy. Father, forgive us for no we have sinned. Let's continue. The opposite of you in every situation. You want a man the opposite of you physically. Now you want a man that have kids not in your situation. You just said they got to approve. Your daddy got to approve. You was honest enough to know that a mother might have some questions if her son brought you home. This is a lot of opposites of you. This is why I said single season could do you well so you could become the person you want to date. Kendra trying to be nice right now. To accept your six month old baby and your four year old baby, but he got to have kids older the age of four. Tell make, me yeah, happens. make this make sense. Let's no, hear a try. I, feel. I don't want to. Okay, so most people that have kids that's wrong, most dudes that have kids that's wrong, my kid's age, you're still, you're still dealing with your baby mama. I don't want to deal with that. I'm not dealing with my baby daddy no more. You just told us you was fucking him the entire time. You know, you don't want him. So you know what that means? We feel a double back happening. You may have been fucking him right now, but you said earlier that you was fucking him during the pregnancy and a little bit after. That's why Kendra's like, well, why did you have a baby that you don't want to be with? You're still having sex with him. You don't believe this crap, guys. Don't believe it here, especially at six months old. She, she's still doing it. Because she already admit to it. But now we're getting to it. Well, I'm not doing them right this second. Like, he got him a girl. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
he did what? Well. So basically, if a man was came to you with your resume, you wouldn't date him. Right. So you wouldn't date yourself. I have myself as a friend. You have yourself as a friend? Mm-hmm. Y'all hear this? But you want a man to date you, so you're asking somebody to do that you actually would not do yourself. Crazy. I know. Well, as you know it's crazy. This is the first step. That's the first step of waking up. And she realizes, now, I bet you never did realize how crazy it sounds until you got to say it back to yourself. So you want, you wouldn't even accept you if you was a man. You wouldn't date you. I probably wouldn't. It'd just be my, be my little, be my little yeah. So what did she say? So it'd be a man that you would just have sex with every now and then. Oh, a little yeah is like that's just your friend. Like we chilling. Like this sounds so goddamn ghetto. You? Okay, I, this I, sounds I so ghetto. You. you have sex with that person? No, we, no, we are friends. Oh no, just friends. This okay. is fucked up beyond so fucked up, child. Okay, so there's no sex. I didn't know what it meant. Okay, no sex. But ultimately, you're saying is if you met a man in your predicament, as in your physical attire, had a six month old child and a four year old child, he could only be your friend. <laughs> you wouldn't date him. Right? Right. But you want a man to date you with all of that going on. He, he don't, I'm not making him. That's up to his, that's his decision. Hello? Yeah, I said that's his decision. Okay, okay. This is fair. This is fair. She wouldn't take the deal, but if you want to take the deal, you should. Let's let's do the Kendra cam, honey. Okay, hold on. Jackie, I Jackie told her so that's what she wants. Kendra, let her go. I'm not gonna let it go until I'm gonna let it go. And that's the problem. Right oh here. hell no. Oh, hell no. Y'all see all that? Oh, hell no. She about a good 260. This is a good 260, guys. I ain't even got no jokes right now, guys. I'm just being real. I don't even have any jokes right now. This is just plain ass sad, right? Like, even how you hear her talk right now, like, I I get it. Kendra is going to get her money. She got to get her views. Like, there are certain dynamics. I'll be like, you know what? Get, you got to get off the show. I, I got a million people that, that I can interview right now for dating, and this ain't even worth it. I, I You know, I get it. It's YouTube. You got to take the bad with the good, you know, and this, and this is the game that's part of, and I get it, Kendra. And there's certain things it's like, is it really worth it? Is this come on now? Come on now. Did you turn around? You turn around fast. Oh, I got that booty in our face. Now. My baby said, hey. Hey, hey, baby. Hey, baby. No, I don't want to see you. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. All right. Alexis, uh, bad mm -hmm. what was your last relationship? My last relationship was with their dad. We were together for over 10 years. 10 years? Okay. And didn't get married? You broke up, you said. <laughs> when you got pregnant with your last child. Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. You was with a guy for 10 years. You had two kids with him, but you broke up when you were pregnant with the second one? Did y'all hear that? She's 31. That means that she met this dude at 20 and was rocking from the 30 or 21 to 31, depending on the six months, how her, her birthday falls and when the when the baby was born. 10 years of y'all just playing house. Y'all just messing around. Y'all just making babies. And then now you put yourself in a situation where you want to be out there in the dating market with two kids looking the way you're looking here and talking to asinine shit that they're talking to asinine shit here. 
Come on, y'all. Likes up in the building. Help your boy out here. This is a hard one here, fellas and ladies. Help your boy out. Intimate at times. Right. Okay. Um, when was the last time you was intimate with someone? Um, you don't have to answer. Let me see. A couple of months ago. Her baby daddy a couple okay. months ago. Was it their father? See? So let me ask you this. Y'all have two kids together, a six-month-old together. Is it impossible for y'all to work things out? I want to say it's impossible, but we both just chose to go out separate ways. Like, to go y'all separate. Do you believe they both did? Or the way she was talking, she left the relationship? I don't think Nug Nug walked away the way she's saying they agreed to it. It sounds like she was the one that was done the way she said earlier in the video. I could be wrong, but y'all heard her in the beginning. Ugh. And if y'all do, y'all can wind it back. Okay. He got a new woman? Uh-huh. Oh, he got a new woman. Okay. So there you have it. He got a new woman. Um. All right. What are three flaws you have to work on? Um, Alexis. Let's get to these flaws here. My attitude. Oh, there you go. My facial expression. And um, that's all I can think of right now. What? You only got two. <laughs> what? What you say? Your attitude and facial expressions are your only flaws. I can think of a few things here. Your diet. Which leads to your weight, amongst other things. I wonder if Kendra's gonna bring this up here. You gonna mention your attitude and your facial expressions, and you ain't gonna mention being healthy. How about that? I'll be nice right now for a second. How about being healthy? That you, I can only think of two. This is what we're talking about here, guys. <laughs> People who don't look in the mirror and actually look at themselves for who they really are. Hey, come on, man. Stop playing with me. Even Kendra's like, come on. If you can't think of three flaws, that's a flaw itself. Sure is. Sure, sure is. Come on, Kendra. Sure say is. it. Say you it, Kendra. You don't have three. Say it, Kendra. That's all I can think say of. Say it, please. That's all you that's all. That's all. That's all. That's all. Okay, and I do want to say something to the people that's in the call me. Not slow. High school diploma. Being to college. It's nothing. The smart call me. Yeah, that's that's not a flex. Good. You're supposed to graduate high school. That's not a flex. Well, I, I, listen, You're I supposed to have the, your high the, school degree. Disclaimer in the beginning. You <laughs> the beginning. So I wanted to make you well aware. But okay. Um, why would a guy be lucky to be with you, Alexis, honey? I'm a team player. You're not gonna be, I'm not gonna leave you stuck out by yourself. Um, I'm supportive. <laughs> and I'm understanding. Okay. What's the age range you would date? You're 31. Okay, here we got the age. 36 here. to 45. 36 to 45. You say you don't want more kids. Um and Okay, let's do it. We got Alexis, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, 31, Scorpio. Um, not currently working. When do you plan on working again? Let's hear this question. Well, I'm in the process of looking for a vehicle. Oh. Got the money. Oh, because you got to get a car, you said, yeah, right? For one. Say again, honey. I'm looking, for, I'm looking for another SUV. Okay, another SUV. Mm -hmm. um, two kids. You already said you got the two tied. You're not trying to have kids again. All right, let's do it, Alexis. Um, and you want the guy to be tall and skinny. What's that again? You want, like, you want the man to be tall and skinny. Right. Do you want to get married or that's not important to you? I do want to get married. Um, I have my baby daddy did propose to me. We were supposed to get married this year in August, but like I say, we call it quits. Why? I do want to be married. Wait, 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 wait. You, okay, why did you call it quits? He wants wait, 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 wait. Okay, they're gonna have to say why'd you call it quits? Wait, wait, it's past August. We in March. September, October, November, December, January, February, March. Seven months ago. 
Your baby is six months old. So that means that you were eight months pregnant. <laughs> we got, wait, let's hear this. <laughs> Hold on. I could be wrong. Let's let's see if she got a good explanation. I, I know I'm jumping the gun, tribe. I know I am. Let's, let's, I, sh- maybe she has a good explanation right now. I'm 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 trying to change my ways a little bit here, guys. I I know I jumped the conclusions at times, but sometimes a lot of times I'm right. Hold on, let let me stop jumping to conclusions, even though ninety five percent of the time I'm right. Let's hear this. Come on now. He wanted to marry you. You have two kids together, and how did he find it? Okay, I got two questions. Why did you say no? And you guys, and I think you were pregnant in August, right? Right. That's what I said, Kendra. He proposed to you while you were pregnant. No, he proposed to me last year, the beginning of last year. So you weren't pregnant, pregnant before you had the baby. Okay, so, so what you happened? Said no, but then you still got pregnant. By him? I told him yes, I married him. We're supposed to okay. get married this year. Okay, so what okay. happened? What happened? What happened? Like I said, two Scorpios came. No, together. no, that's not an answer. No. no. Uh, what happened? Thank you, Kendra. Why did you Thank not you. marry the man? That- yeah. No, Why don't give me this yeah. Scorpio yeah. bullshit. Yeah. What? Come on. Happened that you Stop lying. Get to the what point. Was it his decision? No, it was mine. I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. It was her decision. I called it earlier, guys. I couldn't do. I. Couldn't- we got the we the same person. We got the same attitude. We both got a small mouth. Like we the same. And no, I found get- another woman oh. already. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. You've been with this guy for 10 years. You knew he had a smart mouth for 10 years. You know you both had attitudes for 10 years, right? You knew this. You knew this. You knew this. Yeah. I thought somebody said. I ran him out. No, I didn't ran him out. If I want to, we could get back together. So I got another, because you, you told me that you got pregnant, you, know, you guys broke up. Maybe six months old. Mm-hmm. So last year he proposed. You said yes. So when did you end the engagement? Wait, I, I'm. It's the rules, guys. Shout out to Arvin. Before I announce this out here, guys, when we react to videos, if y'all tired of the video, y'all drop the $20 holla, you state why you want to skip it, you got to put skip on there, and then we move on. The only caveat is that if we ain't got to the Kendra cam, we do the Kendra cam, and then we move on. We already got to the Kendra cam, okay? So shout out to my man Arvin in the building. He, he Now you're the high sponsor of today's show with the $20 holla. I love it when you turn the chat colors, people. And we ain't done yet. We got time. We got more videos. I did a whole hour and a half of sports talk, so you know I got time tonight. So Arvin says, skip it, Dave. Skipper needs to skip. Damn. <laughs> My man Arvin's in the building. Shout out to Arvin. Brother, salute. Thank you for the holla. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right back at you on that super. I'm going to keep you on the screen for a little bit here, Arvin, because you dropped that holla on me. We're going to talk while I keep it on the screen. You put, you put that much effort until you was tired. I was tired, too. You've been with someone for 10 years, Arvin. She knew she had a smart mouth, and she knew he had a mouth. You knew you had an attitude. You knew he had an attitude. You knew that you weren't shit, and you knew that he wasn't shit. (laughs) And then after all this is going on, you had a four-year-old. Well, it's not a four-year-old now, but you proposed when the kid was two, three years old, and then... You didn't. You weren't even pregnant yet. You accepted the proposal. You kept saying we were sport. You, you, you see how women lie like this here without getting the direct answer. That's why I don't fuck with zodiac signs, guys. That's why I go in. I joke around. I say, "Damn zodiacs." You hear that, right? Y'all love that. And I say, "Damn zodiacs," right? But this is why I don't rock with zodiacs. 
when we talk about accountability and for now, shout out to Fanon. He, 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 he was talking about some of the debate we had and everything. I you know we, we talk about women, things of that nature. We, I love to have another debate with him when, when he's, when he's well versed, the thing we're going to talk about here, right? It was fun talking to Fanon, but this is what I'm talking about. Accountability for now. And I know you understand that not all women are like this. But the issue that we have here is we got a large segment of our population where that at least the guy was trying to do the right thing. He already had one kid with you. He proposed, you're supposed to get married in August. And so then you get pregnant again. And then you were supposed to get married one month before the baby was born. And then what happens? You break up because I, we can't have the same attitudes. We can't be Scorpios. Women are choosing to be baby mamas. Women are choosing singlehood here. The being single moms. And you saw what happened with this guy here. He was like, if you ain't going to marry me, I'm going to find someone's going to rock with me. So she's like, he got it someone else new here right now, right? He could be pokey. He could be nug nug. He could be Dusty Darrow. But she chose to break it off, and it wasn't infidelity. He wasn't putting hands on her. Her thing was, we're Scorpios. And since we're the same, we can't blend. But you've been dealing with this blend for 10 years. And then you created two kids out of the mess here. And then it's going to be like, what's wrong with the guys here? What's wrong with the black men here? What's wrong with women like this here who chooses to be out here in the streets like this here? Now, you chose the streets when the guy was like, hey, here comes baby number two. Let's do it right here. Let's make it official. We've been playing house for a decade. No, I can't do it no more. Oh, we Scorpios. Oh, we got attitude. Oh, you know, we got big mouths. I never once heard throughout this entire thing when she talked about him that he was just a cheater and things of that nature. Only thing I heard about her when she was bringing out what kind of guy she wanted, she didn't want no guy who smoked weed. I'm just going to assume that maybe this guy smoked weed. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's got for a decade. You met him at 20 years old. He was probably, he talks up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get it. You know, you probably tired of the weed smoke and everything, but you created two kids here. You know what, though? At, at this point in the game right now, it's not about you anymore. It's about them damn kids, right? And I would think at this point in the game right now, the kids are more important than anything else, and their upbringing means more than anything else. The reason why I didn't see this video, I'm, re I'm blind reacting, but I added the caveat early before I started this video on how much my dad meant to me. I, this is crazy how this is coming up, guys. We're getting to the next video in a second. But did you notice how before this video started, I talked about how my dad worked midnight, and even though that when he was not around because, or when he was always around, let me take that back, but when, you know, he was sleeping because he had to go to work. And just the fact that me just sitting next to him, even though he was asleep, I felt closer to him. I wanted to be there next to him because it, I knew dad had to work. He had to leave out the house at 1030 to get to work at 11 and get off at 7 so he could be home at 8. And then he'll go ahead and help me out. He'll help moms out, cook breakfast for me, take me to school, whatever like that. So I got the middle school before I got the bus. I, I mentioned these things about having the black daddy in the home. How even in the sometimes when they're sleeper, they, maybe they're so tired doing the bare minimum and you have no idea how kids, especially a young boy, looks at that and says, dad's home and, I and, I, and I'm happy dad's home right now. I know dad's got to work, but I'm going to sit here. I know dad's sleeping. I'm not going to bother him because if he if he crashes in the road, we ain't got no one to pay for this house here. And you see how she just said, hey, you know what, though? Oh, we're Scorpios, so I'd rather be single. <laughs> Make it make sense, y'all. Make it make sense, y'all. Let me get to this next super. We're going to move on. Shout out. Thank you, Arvin. Shout out to T. Lee, who dropped in the $5 holla. Turn the chat green here. What you got for me, T. Lee? That dude wanted her to dump him. That's why he moved on so fast. Thank you, T. Lee. Thank you. Hey, brother T. Lee. Salud. Thank you for the holla. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right back at you on that super, man. Hey, man. Maybe he did, T. Lee. Maybe he did. But at least he tried to do the right thing. Because there's three sides to every story. There's his side. There's her side. And then we're going. the truth all bumbles in the middle. We couldn't get the truth because she kept saying, we Scorpios, we Scorpios. And they would say, well, you know, I, I broke it off. I broke it off. At least he tried, T. Lee. At least he tried to live with his kids and her. 
try to make it official, give her a last name. You know? Once you play house for 10 years, you know, and you've done this, you've done these things here, it's about the kids now. If the guy is not physically harming you, if the guy does not, if you're if if if, if you're safe, nothing's happening on a crazy level like this here. Yo, but you choose to be single out here in these streets here? Another victim. Another victim, T. Lee. Kareem said, this is what's wrong with the black community. Women chose to have two kids by this man and left him because of the date he was born. It, exactly, Kareem. Because of the month where he fell in, it's the same month as you of a Scorpio season. And that's because y'all don't work out. Man, y'all need to stop this goddamn Zodiac sign bullshit. There's 12 months in a year, which is 12 Zodiac signs, and there's 350 million Americans. <laughs> You don't tell me that every single person is broken down and diagnostic to the point of these 12 zodiac signs, or y'all just lazy as fuck. Make it make sense, man. Make it make sense. You got me crying with the on point impression of her. Hey, I'm sorry about that, bro. <laughs> hey, man, she she got the all that's about weed smokers to sound like she smokes Newport 100s. I can hear the wheezy in her voice. Is it the Newport 100s or she got high blood pressures? She either smoking them Newport 100s, the tall box, or she got high blood pressures. Got the nerve to talk like she do here, man. Like, any. This is what we're talking about here. We can't save everybody. You can't save everybody. Look at Diddy. We can't save Diddy as well. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, y'all ready for the next video? Press one. Y'all ready for the next video? Press one. Let's move on. Let's get it going. That was wild, guys. That was, that's wild. Like, if she could have said anything to Lions, like, he kept cheating on me. You know, like, okay, the guy, you know, he's he's pookie who can't, who can't keep in his pants. I get it. You hood, he's hood, but he constantly cheating. Or... He out here in the streets selling illegal stuff here, and I had to leave. You know, like, I wanted to hear something where that her life and the kid's life was not in the best situation. Not no goddamn Scorpio crap. Like, there's nothing. You can't tell me anything when you chose to break up a guy for 10 years because of Scorpio season, because of some damn Zodiacs. You can't tell. I don't care who the hell you are, right? I don't care who it is. If, if this is how you moving, man, no one's going to tell me anything differently. I'm going to say, I don't care what y'all tell me. Lord have mercy, man. Let's get to this next video, man. This is why I don't know if it's going to be better or not. Ooh, hold on. Woo, sal. Let me drink. Let me get some. I got juice. No alcohol today. Have you got, you guys know the difference when I drink alcohol and when I'm, you know, <laughs> you know, it's a Moscow meal cup, but it's juice in here, right? So y'all know the difference when I've been drinking alcohol and I'm drink, drinking juice. And you know, if I was drinking alcohol, it would be a lot worse. So, you know, sober status today, guys. All right. Next video. Likes up in the building. Likes up in the building. Oh. Let's see if she's any better. Y'all ready? I know I'm ready. Let's do this, y'all. What did Arsenio Hall say? Let's get busy. <laughs> I'm sure my age, I say Arsenio Hall. So, hey, let's see what you got going on, girl. Hold on one second. What you need? You working? No. Gotta go. Looking for a man. Leave her alone. You at work? I'm at work. I called it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'm at work. What are you doing? Are you on your lunch break? No, but I got time. Oh, God. Ooh, let people yep. know. No. One thing let people do. No, I no, Kendra. One thing we do know is black folks will be jeopardizing their jobs for some bullshit. How about this here? How about you wait till your break? Black folks is known doing some nigga dumb. Lord have mercy. People at work talking, hey, I need you to do this. One second. I'm busy. Hey, come on, man. Come on, let's go. I'm gonna tell you what black people don't do at work. Work? <laughs> I love Bernie Mac. Did y'all do y'all remember Kings of Comedy? Stop that shit, Kendra. I work my black ass off. I don't want to hear that shit. Niggas 
don't work at work. Remember that here, tribe. I don't want to hear that here. This little joke said, no, niggas don't do work at work. Black folks, we do our damn jobs. Okay, let's cut that bullshit out right now. What are she going to say about some Kings of Comedy joke? No, niggas, guys, don't be a nigga. Don't be where your other counterpart seems, oh, he ain't doing no work anyway. Nah, 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 nah. Black folks work. Niggas don't. Let's continue now. And Bernie Mac is talking about the woman, and, he, and she says, I ain't come to work to work today. That's right. <laughs> That's Black right. people going to tell you they ain't working at work. You got to love our people. All right, what's your name, baby? How you doing? What's your name, love? Amy. My name is Amy. Oh, do you got to get the Bluetooth in because you're at work? No. Can, is it hard to I hear just, me? I just feel like we had a delay, but let's try it. Amy, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Columbus, Georgia. Georgia, wrong. Georgia. Take the L, wrong. Uh, I'm 35. 35. You need me to take it out? It's working. We're fine. 35. You can What's go to Rome. Damn Zodiacs. They said take your badge off. I can't read it, FBI, KBI, Kendra Bureau Investigators. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't read what it said, but I guess they, I guess they could. What's, uh, what's your Zodiac sign? Damn Zodiacs. Cancer. Cancer. Do you have any kids? No. No kids. No kids. Uh, have you ever been married? No. Never been married. Now, what do you do for a living? I'm a registered nurse. You're an RN. RN. All right, let's do it. We got Amy Columbus, Vince, Georgia. Vince, Rome's holding his loss. RN, 35, cancer, no kids, never married. What kind of man are you looking for, girl? Let's get into this L, Rome. Uh, emotionally intelligent. Let's start right there. Financially secure. That is a new yeah. popular request from people, particularly women, emotionally intelligent. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I want to hear if she can break this down. So, uh, Let's hear this here, try it. A lot of guys think that all they have to do is almost be there. And sometimes when he has a hard day, then, you know, sometimes you need to listen, sometimes you need to what? shut up, sometimes you need to help him troubleshoot as a woman, you know? And I haven't found a man that could actually do the same thing. Okay, she's upset about this. Okay, she wants to talk. Uh, she wants me to just be here or she wants me to talk and help troubleshoot. Emotional emotional intelligence is... Um... Be positive. That has nothing to do with emotional intelligence here. <laughs> do with a man understanding his woman that's not emotional intelligence that's understanding your partner all those things don't have to do with emotions that's all about visuals understanding what she said here i'm gonna let her continue here but women will say emotional intelligence and then they don't, they're not even explaining anything about emotional intelligence. That's just me saying, okay, I need to understand if my woman is tired or it's like, and here's the thing. We, we guys, we don't know this shit anyway. Because y'all be acting funky anyway. This guy, nothing got to do with emotional intelligence here. Every woman got a different definition for emotional intelligence. Actually being able to uh, know when to roll them and know when to hold them when it comes to an emotional situation. You know what? I respect that explanation. I respect that explanation. Try. Am I wrong? Wait, I could have jumped the gun. I want to ask y'all here. We got men and women here. Press a one in the chat. If she broke down emotional intelligence or press a two to say, Dave, she don't know what the fuck she talking about. <laughs> I could be wrong. I want to see this many women in the chat here. And if y'all on the replay gang and ninja watching here, I would love to see y'all comment with the, with the ninja watchers or the replay gang in the comment section here, right? Was that emotional intelligence or she don't know what the fuck she talking about trying to break down emotional intelligence. <laughs> 
<laughs> Rome says two times infinity. <laughs> Vince says folding. Hey, come on, man. <laughs> two, she's a nurse. <laughs> Three red flags. Look, I know I could be wrong at times. I'm going to own that. I'm not going to act like I know it all. But what I did not hear now, one thing about emotional intelligence, what I heard was understanding and being involved with my partner and knowing how she moves. That's not emotional intelligence. That's that's called a relationship. It's called when you're building and you understand how she's moving, you know how to move accordingly. That's not emotional intelligence. That don't take emotions to understand your woman. It takes logic and also being there to understand to see these things here. It's not nothing to do with emotions. You can be emotionless to understand your partner at that moment here. That way that you're not jumping the gun to drop in something that does not need emotions that will make you drive to the wrong conclusion of things. Lord have mercy. Let's let it cook here. Let's let it cook. I, I, ain't, I don't want to talk. Let's let it cook. No, I don't. I mean, I think that, I mean, you explained it. I, I understand now what you're saying. And Kendra so, understands this here, so we know why you've been single at 45 years old now. Understands when you're going through different emotions, how to adjust and show up for you. Yeah, yeah. The same way we do for them, but we're just supposed to know how to do it, you know. Okay. I cut yeah. you off. Continue. So emotional intelligence. What else do you want? Um, financially stable. Um, fit. Handsome. Uh, um, character is huge for me. Character is very huge. That that kind of trumps almost everything. So who you are as a person, no matter what, character. Character always should be the non-negotiable thing. It tells you everything. Um, what's your deal breaker? Deal breakers. Deal breaker is um, emotional manipulation. Oh, you got these emotional words, um, what? Pat. So someone that's playing with your feelings to get what they want. Yeah, like, um, you know, just to be very simple, if you can't answer a text, that's fine. But if you don't answer a text on purpose to try to be hard to get mysterious, like, as soon as I sense that, um, I'm out. Okay. Wait a minute, wait. How do you know that, though? See, this is the fuckery by reading too much the text messages. That's the problem with text messages. How about you just pick up the goddamn phone and call somebody, right? You're going to think, well, if you're going to act mysterious, I'm going to be out of here. Well, how, I don't respond to a lot of text messages nowadays, guys. Like, I respond. Like, last night, I responded to my cousin who sent me a text on Sunday. <laughs> You're not going to get me to respond to texts in a timely manner. They ain't got nothing to do with me being mysterious or no. I'm busy. I'll go ahead and check the text. I'll mark it. I'll come back to it later. And sometimes I may I get back to you the same day and maybe a couple days later. You see how y'all read too much in the text messages? If it's really a problem, pick up the goddamn phone. That's the problem. This is laziness here. If I think this here, don't think. Call and ask. Like, dude, why you didn't answer the text? I'm busy, baby. I'm at work right now. I'm my bad. I'll get back to you later, right? Instead of assuming, instead of jumping to conclusions, how about we communicate? Oh, my God. Even a little bit. Even a little bit, because it's going to get worse. Okay. Now, you mentioned it already. You want him to be handsome. Does he have to look a certain way? Oh, here we go. Not really. Um, he does not have to be a certain height, but I just don't want anybody that's extremely obese. Little Chubb is okay, um, but, you know, just nothing extremely grotesque. Okay. I'm, I'm not very picky uh, with the looks. Yeah, Shock Town. She's she's had some looks. pookies. I'm not extremely picky with looks. That's last on the list. Looks is last on the list. Okay. What about mm -hmm. money? Where money at on the list? Money. Um, it's probably number two, right up on the character. Uh oh. Yeah, that's um, and what are the list. okay, number two? So character, then money. How much money does he have to make? Uh, shoot, at least $500,000. 
she wants a guy to make five hundred thousand dollars a year because she's growing and he should be growing. Let's let it cook. Y'all heard that. Am I delusional? Are you delusional? <laughs> Well, 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 you, he's your man, you're his girl, a committed relationship. Y'all spent holidays and birthdays with a man that made 500K. Yes. How long did y'all date for? Who? A very long time. What's okay. a long time? What's Eight a long time? Eight, Eight, Eight years. And you broke yeah. up when? Ooh, 2020, something like that. So what was your non-negotiable? to like walk away from that relationship um our values didn't align you know um and what? also you know the thing that a lot of guys do they like to cheat um so i'm assuming they're gonna of course they're gonna want to know do you make 500 and stuff? hell no she's an rn I don't think that's some information that I do not want to share with the public. You do okay, not I, make $500,000 RN. Answer if you don't want to answer, I don't ask that. Stop question. lying. But the, the curiosity will be there because you said bare minimum 500K. So if he made 300000 you couldn't do it. Possibly. It's possible. Possible. Yeah, I, want this, I want you to break this down because obviously, if I make you a highlight, it is going to be discussed. And it's a lot of discussions about women in general having money requirements. And it used to be 100K, girl. It used to half a million. So um, do you care to explain why a man would have to make 500K to date you? Uh, there's just a certain lifestyle that I'm used to uh, that I maintain for myself, uh, a certain lifestyle that I want with another person. I don't plan on working for forever not even another two, two years she wants As you to retire her guys spouse so he has to definitely be um on his way to being financially independent so the so you are already now but you plan on not working eventually yes okay so that's why the so you actually just want him to have, you want him to have enough money to take care of the lifestyle that you currently have for yourself and you're gonna start working when? When you plan on getting married? Oh no! If if I don't get married, my uh, my plan will still happen. So a couple what? years. How many years? Maybe two. So you want to stop? You want to retire at, at 37? I want to not hit a, a time clock. I don't. Yeah, understand. retire. Work. But for myself, work for myself. So you'll still be working, but just in a different capacity. Yes. That means you ain't retired. Do you, I'm assuming you want to get married and have children, or no? Yeah. You're 35. So the goal is when you get married or have children. How many kids we gonna get out of you? To be a. You already had geriatric pregnancy right now. That you guys maintain. Yes, correct. And that's why he has to make 500k. Yes. I'm going to give you a chance to respond because this is going to be said. You're delusional. You're not going to get a man that is willing to marry you and be faithful and that makes 500K. And it's, you, why would you even say it? So what is your response to the people, once they watch this, might have that response? I just, just want somebody that's my equal on all levels. So somebody what? getting me, they don't have to compromise 
I got to pause here. I've been letting that cook. Ladies, any man that makes $500,000 a year, you are not his equal. That is less than a 1%, man, by the sheer numbers. It's not about a hierarchy. This is not about being superior or not superior. This is a, this is a fact about supply and demand. A man making this kind of money is so far in between. We're literally, when you get to 500, we're literally looking at athletes now. We're looking at CEOs, the guys who are running the corporations of these businesses here. And you're 35 years old with no kids and you want to be retired. And here's the thing, too, that I want to say, and some people may hate me for this. Who's watching me right now? You need to stand out for the $500,000 man. Like this man has access to so many women that he's going to say, I, he, this man works his ass off. First of all, you don't make 500,000 doing nothing. Okay. He ain't working a nine to five. His nine to five is actually him staying and going on conference calls and meetings and working late. If he's actually in the corporate world, or if he runs a business, he's working 15, 18 hours a day. Right? So you got to understand, like, you're not going to be his equal because there's not many of him. This is not being mean. This is not about saying, oh, guys, at this here and women lose value. People hate the, the term of how you lose your value. No, we're talking about the fact of the sheer numbers. This is less than 0.01% of the black male population. And then you got the off that say, I want my equal. You can't even give this man four kids if he wanted because you're 35. You might be giving him one, and then you're going to have the deal of the geriatric pregnancy where you might be one and done if you can at least get pregnant now. We got to end this. Like, my equal. That man is not your equal. That man's on top of the food chain. Let's get back into this here. At all. And I guess you're super in a second. I mean, nobody's perfect, but um, I just want my equal, basically. Okay. Let's do the kiss your cam. I mean, work. So, let's see. Why well, you call me at work, girl? <laughs> For real. Ooh, looks like you thick with it. Ooh, that body. Girl, that book. Ooh, that booty turn. <laughs> that booty Ooh. sitting. Thank you. Oh, oh my God. Okay. Um, Amy, what's the age range you want to date? You're 35. Ooh, 40. Let me do 20. that again, guys. Hmm. I got to do that again. Say 55. Give me one second, try it. 40 to 55. Can he have kids already? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, 40 to 55. I got to rewind that back again. I didn't get a good look. Okay. Woo, that booty. One more again. Body. Oh, let's see. Well, you clock can't what girl? <laughs> Ooh, looks like you thick with it. Ooh, that body, girl. That Age for the tribe here. This is what y'all working with here. Okay. Just wanted had a little bit of freeze up problems here, but what do y'all think here, tribe? What do you think about the body? Ooh, that booty turn. <laughs> <laughs> that booty Ooh. sitting. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Um, Amy, what's the age range you want to date? You're 35. Ooh, 42. Hmm. I say 55. 40 to 55. Could he have kids already? Yes. 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 Um, of course. I, you want I kids? I prefer none, but yes. Okay. Um, when was your last relationship? Uh, 2020. 20. Been four years. Maybe 2021. This is the man that made over 500k, right? Yes. So what happened? Now you said he cheated on you. Was he with somebody else? I don't know. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, but I, it ended. Did it end because you said he was cheating? Yes. Okay. How, how did you find out? I'm nosy. Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> How'd you find out on Facebook? I just saw. Some stuff on Facebook and followed up. Ooh, child. Okay. Um, you don't have to answer, but I'm gonna ask. When's the last time you was intimate with someone? Yes. Okay. Been recently. Three flaws you have to work on. Let's see what she got. Three flaws, guys. Um, 
I'm a perfectionist and I kind of expect that of other people. So I don't have, have a lot of leniency on um, pretty much anything. Um, I just feel like if I can get it done, then why can't you? Um, okay. Let's see what else. Come on. Well, second, second one. I am a little bit of a doomsday prepper, kind of like a conspiracy theorist. And if a person also does not have that mindset, then it makes me, um, you know, kind of weird, so to speak. Uh, third, what? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, um, wait, so he, he's got to think the negative doomsday? Like, it's got it's to be, oh, the end of the world's coming, or woe is me, or I, I, that, that didn't make no sense. Like, sh she fears the worst, and he's got to be on this level, too? So we got to have, oh, my, oh, oh, oh. Uh, this is this is too much, guys. This is wild here. This is wild. We can see why she's single, tribe. Uh, I don't know. I work a lot. Okay, she works a lot. And why would a guy be lucky to be with you? Uh, um, I feel like I'm the total package. Um, I'm emotionally intelligent. Um. I don't have any kids, uh, and I'm extremely ambitious. I can, can be um, ambitious on my own or support his ambition. Okay. Um, so we got all. And why do you think you're single, Amy? Oh, let's get into this here. Let's see what you're going to say. Because I have extremely high standards. You ain't lying about that. I mean, okay. I just want my equal. That's it. I don't. Nobody, the person getting me wouldn't have to compromise much. So I don't want to compromise. This man might be compromised and I'd be able to have no damn kids. <laughs> See, I don't want to hear any arguments like so many women, Dave, are having kids. <sighs> no, they're not. There's 350 million Americans. You guys are hearing about the women who are having babies at 35. You're not hearing the complications. You're not hearing the problems that goes through having a geriatric pregnancy, right? I seen it firsthand because I dealt with it, okay? Y'all think women can have it all the time. Modern science and technology. Yeah, technology may allow you to go have in vitro and have kids, as, you know, things of that nature here, but it still doesn't stop what mother nature does with the body and what women have to go through. So when you say a man don't got to compromise, what if a man wants a lot of kids? Modern technology can't change that your womb is geriatric and that you maybe can give me one at best. Now, there could be some guys that will say, Dave, I want one kid and that's all I need. But what if you found the guy that you were looking for and he wanted kids? You're... There's so many things. That's the main thing that I get at when you're going to try to get with this top tier upper echelon, man. You may say, Dave, you're just going with the kids aspect, right? There's other things that we can look at that what could be looking for here. Saying so got a compromise. Yeah, he's actually compromising here because you are saying that 300,000 is probably too low. So you know what that means? That means that if we get to a certain point, like if you came to her life and you made a quarter million dollars a year, she may scoff at you. Like, what man wants to deal with that when he knows for a fact that he is clearly on top of the food chain, doing his God do, and can retire you, and you're basically saying, oh, you're too broke for me, Negro. <laughs> Ain't no man want to deal with no 35-year-old nurse who's talking like this here. Let's continue. I'll get to you supers in a second. they wouldn't have to compromise much um a lot of pretty girls are not very smart a lot of very smart girls are not very pretty um they're not very intelligent uh they don't have experiences that can support his ambition um i think i'm just an all-around great person Okay, hold on, Tron. Wait, hold on. I wanted to pause that here real fast. She's over here 
This is what I'm talking about. Older women, they despise younger women. The fact that a young woman could be a certain age, I'm not talking about 20 and 21 year olds, but it don't matter if you're 27, 28 years old. Women hate on other younger women. If you are younger, if, if you have, you're a younger woman, ladies, older women hate your guts. You know, younger women this and younger women that. And it's like, yo, didn't you used to be young at one time? I bet you if you asked her, she's 35 years old right now. And if you asked her how she moved at 30 years old, you know what she's going to say? She ain't going to tell you that she was dumb. She's going to tell you, I was a nurse probably at 35 years old. I was getting to it, Dave, like that here. But we talk about another young, well, she's not me, though. Got to remember here, man, women hate other women. And then older women despises younger women. Let's finish this off. A lot of pretty girls ain't that smart. A lot of smart girls ain't that pretty. That's what that's what Amy said, child. So if you want a pretty smart woman on your side, you're looking at one right here. So we got Amy, Columbus, Georgia, 35, cancer, no kids. RN will date 40 to 55, prefers a man that makes 500K. I asked you about 300K, most say 100K. So you would entertain a man that makes 100K. I would I would uh, I think my minimum might be 250. Wow. Minimum 250. 250 wow. All right. Yeah. Fellas, if you don't, if, 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 if this don't apply to you, then a don't guy, apply. A guy that makes that much money won't have a problem with it. And Say I again? have a filter to filter. A guy who makes that much money won't have a problem with it. And, um, a person that makes 200 or 300 or 400,000 will make it through the filter the undesirables won't what? don't play with her let's do it amy how can this man reach out to you bro oh my facebook is amy 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 is it and so it's amy? Ooh, it's like like seven but i think if you type it in it'll come up okay so and then you're also in columbus georgia on facebook too Yes. Okay. Amy, Amy. So seven Amy's on Facebook. Yes. Okay. All right. All right, Amy. Well, listen, you know, you're going to be a highlight girl. So I'm going to want to hear the feedback. Sounds good to me. I, I love it. Bye, boo. Bye. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, y'all. Likes up in the building real fast before I move on to the next video. She has no idea that she is destined herself to be damn single here. And what am I saying here? Whether y'all women realize it or not, when we hear that, we hear true definition of gold digger because you literally said 250 is the bare minimum. You didn't say anything in detail about a quality man. Right. We didn't hear about his qualities, how he moves, how he's really going to treat you. We heard more conversation about what this man does. I mean, how much this man makes compared to anything else here. And do you think that any man that makes a quarter million dollars a year, that makes three hundred thousand dollars a year, that makes five hundred thousand dollars a year to hear this say that's the bare minimum and you're not drop dead gorgeous. Now, I'm not saying that she's not cute. You know, she got a nice little body and things of that nature. I'm not mad at the booty. Hey, the booty, the booty was kind of rotund there. You know, but men who make that kind of money needs more than just a fat ass. A man who is making that kind of money is already a millionaire because if he's generating that kind of revenue every year, then what he's stacking, what he's saving is beyond it's millionaire stats. Unless this guy's living beyond his means is just tricking off his money. Right. But any man who is living like this here is beyond is lower than 1% of the population, especially with black men. Like I know some people don't like stats, but when we look at numbers here, only 7% of black men make a hundred thousand dollars a year, 7%. And then we're not even talking about if they're married. We're not talking about if they're gay, the LGBT, BT, LMNOP community. We're not talking about if they're transgender, you know, we're not talking about if they're even attracted to you or hell. Hell, if you even attracted to him, if you find this guy, right? I know you didn't say looks is everything, but let this dude be 500 pounds looking like Buff from the Fat Boys. Will you take him at 500,000 a year? I don't know. I don't know. But this is why I'm saying women like this, man, you're destined to be single forever. Because as a man, I don't hear that you're a quality woman. 
I don't hear that you are a hard worker as an RN. I don't hear that you are a good person, that you treat your man right. All I hear is I will only settle for a quarter million dollars a year. And you got to understand when a man of that age, we talk about getting to the 40s and 50s and he making that kind of money, he's dealt with gold diggers. He knows what's for show and what's for go. Now, there's a couple of guys who are just tricking off their money and don't know no better. But the majority of men who's at this status here, I hate to say this here. I'm not saying I condone it. But, yeah, there's a chance that possibly that man might be cheating. <laughs> he wanted access to different women, things of that nature. You might be, you might need to deal with that. And let's say that he's not a cheater. He wants just one man. You need to get on his program because it's not going to be equal. He's working and making this kind of money. Then he's going to delegate to say what he needs in his life so that you can fill in the pieces that might be missing with him in his daily endeavors. If he's making $500,000 a year, there's nothing you can do for him. He can hire a chef. You know, he can have someone cook for him as far as food. He can have someone clean his house. Molly maids ain't that expensive. He can have Molly maids come through and clean his crib here. When it comes to sex, you're making that kind of money. He literally could have, he really can have the gambit here, right? So my thing is, there are so many things that could be outsourced when he's making this kind of money here, but that man needs peace. That man needs a woman who is secure and understands what he is doing in his career or his entrepreneurial business here, where that you need to slide in, fill in the pieces because this man is busy and is doing what he got to do to get to the bag. And if all we hear is the bare minimum is a quarter million or 300,000, you know, I'm a good for it here. No, 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 no. See, that's the problem, ladies. When you put the number down like the way you did, all I hear is gold digger. It's not just me here, you can say. I know so many men, it's like, dude, she, she won't talk to me for a quarter million a year? No, how about I'm not going to tell you how much I make? How about that? How you going to know? You're just going to assume? You don't know if I make a hundred thousand or a quarter million. One thing you're going to know is I dress like I'm doing well, but how you going to know that? You don't. You don't, you don't. And you know, ladies, this is going to get y'all in trouble. This is going to get y'all in trouble, trouble, trouble. Let's move on here. Shout out to Dank in the building. Dropping the $19.99, $20 holla. Dank is tied for the sponsor high today. Dank, what's going on, brother? Good to see you. Sorry I had kept you waiting here, but I didn't want to ruin the flow of this video here because this video was out of pocket here. But you see Dank here, guys. No questions, no comments. Dank just dropped this for the love of the game. <laughs> My oh, man, Dank in the building. Hey, brother Dank. Salud. Thank you for the holla. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right back at you on that super. We just hit the three-hour mark here in this live stream. Guys, I tell you, I'm here for at least three to four hours today. Well, we're going to probably get to four today, maybe. You know, but shout out to you, Dank, for coming in and dropping that love on your boy, man. I'm humbled. Thank you very much, man. Hope all's well in your way in Florida, man. Thank you, man. You're helping keeping the lights on here, guys. Got to keep the lights on here. Got to get the mic working. Got to keep the got to keep the mixer going. Got to get the laptop going and things of that nature. Yeah. Appreciate you. Appreciate you man thank you thank you thank you jerkin that was wild guys what's going on larry i saw you came in late too shout out to larry in the building yeah so that was wild we're gonna go to the next video in a second here but come on now what are we doing with here five hundred thousand dollars a year tell me you want to be single about being single and then here's the thing that kills me i have a certain lifestyle that i'm used to are you funding your lifestyle? If you're an RN, if you're a nurse, and if you're making money like that, then why do I need to fund your lifestyle? If you already get into the bag, the idea is for us to find our match, come together, and see if we're compatible compatible to be able to grow and, and be together, right? So if you really get into this where your lifestyle is already good, and let's say the guy is making at least $100,000 a year, he's not bringing your lifestyle down. Any person that comes into your life that is making six figures, it's going to elevate you and upgrade you. That's a fact here. If you're making good money and he makes good money, y'all come together with both good money. Y'all living good here. So why is it when they say I have a lifestyle, are you trying to say that you're funding your lifestyle? So this guy's got to come in so you can quit your job so you can keep living off his dime or you can, of course, your work is still right now. You say you got two more years, hopefully. So you want to pocket your money. So all your money go to goddamn purses, purses, shoes, weaves and sandals. <laughs> 
Rome said, what are you saying here, Rome? That's all that's in Georgia, Dave. Hey, Rome. So have you come across RNs that actually talk like this? Or other nurses in the medical practice? Like, she's not even a doctor. Now, don't get it twisted here. RNs make good money. I know they do, especially if they're getting overtime and they're working that time and a half, or even if you're a travel nurse, right? I mean, I know travel nurses that make $180,000 a year, and they only work nine months out of the year. They take the last three months off. You know, I know travel nurses make a lot of money. I know RNs make a lot of money, but we're talking doctor salary here, not RN salary. We're talking about a quarter of a million dollars a year. That's not RN salary. I know RNs who make a hundred, maybe depending on how long you've been in, close to two hundred thousand. But we get into three, four, five hundred thousand. We're talking doctor salary. We ain't talking nurse salary. Nurses can make good money, but she's talking MD status. Oh my God. I'm tired of listening to these fake broke scavengers talking about who they want to date with money. These skanks ain't got no cheddar. They just want a free meal. Keep buying KFC. Damn. Let me know how you feel. <laughs> but that's what we're talking about, brother. She says, I have a lifestyle. So I'm supposed to fund your lifestyle because the last dude who you was with, that didn't work out. And now you need that again. And so I got to fund that because you got a taste of the good life. That's not my job. What happened to the real things about relationships? Oh, my God. This is, oh, my. Maybe I should have drank tonight, guys. This actually makes me a little upset tonight. I mean, I'm upset because you see someone who obviously is smart enough to go through school, to finish and become an RN, and to work in a hospital and do your thing here. I mean, that's 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 hard work, guys. I'm, I'm not going to minimize being an RN. I, you know, shout out to my boy Mike, you know, Mike's Philippine Journey. He's in the healthcare field. You know, he, he used to outsource and, you know, deal with LPNs and nurses and doctors. His whole family is doctors and things of that nature. So he understands the game, right? And so he kind of pours into me a little bit so I can understand. I don't know all, but when I hear this, and it's like you're smart enough to get you're smart enough to get your career, you're smart enough to get your RN, and you're smart enough to go ahead and help people in these hospitals here and do what you gotta do to maintain your job. But you really are saying all these things here. Women like this are destined to be alone, guys. That's not me telling them what to do. You're literally shooting yourself in the foot. You're literally telling men to stay away because I'm going to tell you ladies right now. I, and as well as other guys who I rock with, don't tell our salaries until down the line. Hell, <laughs> there's been circumstances. I was in serious relationships and the chick didn't know how much I made to, to two years into the game. <laughs> like, I'm really going to tell you how much I make so that, you, no, I'm, I'm really iffy about that, right? I, I, I'll be upfront and honest. Like, yeah, you know, it took me a long time to make six figures. You don't know how much I'm making six figures. You don't know. I could be lying to you. I could be making exactly 105 a year. I could make it be 150 a year. I could make it 200,000 a year. I could make it a quarter million dollars a year. I could make $400,000 a year. You don't know what I got here. I literally could tell you that I'm a millionaire by by real estate and by investments and savings. Or I could be lying to you, say I ain't got none of that shit, right? But you know what? I'm not lying about some things. I'm not, not something. I'm not lying at all. But y'all don't know that, though. But I'm going to be vague as hell. I'm not going to tell someone who I met. Yeah, I make $500,000 a year. You may have an idea like, okay, he drives this car. He's able to do this. He's able to buy that. But you don't know if I'm false flagging. You don't know if I'm just faking it till I make it. You have no idea if I'm just using my credit card and swiping everything left and right. And I can't afford anything. I'm financing my lifestyle. <laughs> and that's what we got going on with so many people on Instagram. People are faking it till they make it. So you have no idea if you come across a guy who could lie to you just to get in your draw scene. I make $500,000 a year. And all he's doing is just swiping, swiping, swiping. And, and paying the bare minimum's credit card every month. Come on, guys. Hey, we got another video here. I need some ones in the building if y'all ready for another video, man. He says, I think of the professions that don't make 500K, and she is saying those are not good enough. Doctors, attorneys, judges, banking, district managers, restaurant owners, IT firm owners. You're right, Rome. Basically, she's saying that if 250 was the lowest, she couldn't fuck with some of my, some of my managers at the New York Fed. 
I have managers that make 250, 300,000 a year. And, you know, and I, there's directors that make that. Every group is different, whether it's in the Chicago Fed, the New York Fed, you work in St. Louis, you work in the Atlanta Fed, you know, or you work in the Fed in California. You know, every district is different in my in, with my job here because of cost of living in different state matters, right? So there could be a job over here in Chicago that only pays one, I say only 150 for a manager, but that same manager makes 250 in New York here. What she's basically saying is that these guys making high six figures who got a pension, who got hot, who got benefits up the Wahoo here, that's not good enough. So, fellas, when you hear this kind of bullshit, run for the hills because all she's doing is counting your wallet. That's a pocket watcher. <laughs> you don't need no pocket watcher in your life, man. My ex was a traveling nurse for 20 years. She was making major chatter and never pressed me to take her out or buy her merchandise. She took me out most of the time, but we cooked our own meals. That's what's up, brother. That's what's up. Any woman that says I need to be funded by my lifestyle, guys, that right there should be a red flag to run away. Any, Here's the thing I want to say here before I get to this next video. Thank you, Jay, for the one. I don't see any more ones here. That's why I'm going to talk for a few more seconds here. I'm going to tell you guys something here. A woman could come across you. And she knows just by your presence, by your aura, the way you talk about your job, you could be passionate about your career, things that nature. She knows that, hey, this guy's doing something for himself, right? The right woman's going to say, I know. I mean, this. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. I know he's getting to the bag, but I'm not trying to make this guy broke. Hey, I, I, I need this magical Negro. Let me see where I can get in where I fit in at. I'm not going to ask for no first class ticket. We're going to go out of town. Hey, baby, I found this ticket. I found a round trip for under $200. We, we don't got to ride first class. There's nothing wrong. We're going to get there eventually, right? We just, 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 just we, We'll splurge when we get in town. Like a woman like this would say, I got to fly first class. <laughs> the reason I'm saying that is I fly first class, right? So if, I'm, if you rock with me, you got to be worth first class. But if you ain't worth it, your ass is flying coach. You know, but a woman who will see a good guy be like, how can I get in where I fit? In? I don't want you to spend all this money on first class. We got to go out town, baby. We can look at this here. We're going to get in town a few hours earlier. This call, this chick is a lot cheaper here, right? How about we do this here? We just got to wait around for a few hours, but we're saving a couple hundred, a couple hundred bucks. The right woman is going to recognize, even though you're making that money, she's going to try to find ways to say how you can save money. So you can spend money and more, more money on her later. <laughs> See, this is game for y'all ladies here right now. If you found yourself a man who was getting to the bag like this here, uh, a smart woman is going to help you save money here so that you she knows that you're going to spend money on her down the road, down the road other, elsewhere, right? She ain't going to ask for, this is my lifestyle. That's a woman destined to be single and alone. And then by the time she's in her 40s, she's going to wish that she had a guy $100,000 that was snipping her away. Oh, my God, man. Rich men are not rich because they spend money without understanding. Man, who are you telling, Jurgen? Man, I got to tell you guys, I told you all this here. The more money I started making in my career, the more I started working more. It's kind of weird. When I was broke as hell, I spent more money. <laughs> when I was making average money in my mid-20s, when I was in my squire phase, trying to build myself, I, even though I wasn't a big spender, I realized I spent more than I was supposed to. The more money I made, the more I started working more. Because I started seeing the bag. I was like, yo, if I'm getting this here, what I got to do here? And so then it's like eight-hour days? Nah, we doing 12, 13, 14-hour days. Like, damn, Dave, you working this much? I want the bag. When guys get a taste of the money, we going to keep working because we want more money. <laughs> now, we may take a few days here and there. We going to enjoy ourselves, take our break. But then once we get out of our little break vacation, we back to get into the bag. Because when a man is focused and he's on his grind, it is grind mode. It is focus season. And we get into it. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. <laughs> it's a game like a snuff spitter. <laughs> <laughs> Fish, I'll take first class. You take Greyhound tickets. So by the time you get to destination, I'm already back home waiting on you. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just saying, though, right? The right woman, guys, she's going to find ways to save you money. She's not trying to find a way to fund a lifestyle. Remember that. Remember that as I get to this next video. The right woman is going to find ways to save you money because she knows that down the line, like, yo, we're going to need this for the family one day. We're going to need an emergency fund. Hey, 
this house, we got we got to upgrade this house. We got to fix this kitchen here. Or we got to upgrade the bathrooms, baby. Oh, you know what, though? I, you're too busy to do the yard work. We got to pay someone to do this yard out here, right? You know you know, you want to see the grass right here. And I can't cut the grass. And you can't cut the grass. So let's find a way so we can manage these funds properly so we can maintain the yard. Or saying, don't worry, baby. I'm going to cook tonight here because you've been working so hard and I got this meal wreck waiting for you. Things like that. Not this you got to fund my lifestyle because I want to quit working in two years. Here's the thing, though. If you rock with me, yes, I don't want you to work as much here. I want you to, you know, you're a woman, and I get it. When You know, I want my woman to be taken care of. You be rocking with me. But the one thing it's not going to be is you give it me. you got a shot clock saying two years and I'm done working, Negro. Wait, 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 wait. No, I need to know your worth here. When I say I know you're worth it, I need to see how much of your hard worker you are so that when I do retire you, when I think it's time for you to stop working, handle this kids, handle the household, I know you're going to work just as hard as maintaining the household and doing what we got to do here. Or if you're still going to be working here, I know you a hustler still getting it and bringing money into the fold here as well. Either way, I need to know that you're working your ass off too because I'm working my ass off too. There's different ways we're working, but we're a couple. We're going to pull our shit together so that we are a, a happy, established, nuclear couple. That's the game, guys. Find someone who ain't trying to spend all your money. Find someone who's going to save you money. And then when the money's saved, then you don't mind spending on her when you take your trips and doing things. And even when you do spend the money, you're not blowing all your money. You know, we're just, we're just doing little extra things here and there. New channel name, Dave Spitz Game. <laughs> I'm just saying, man, like, I get it how women want the top tier guy. But these women act like the top tier men don't hear this shit. <laughs> right? They're talking and acting like we don't hear. We're just dumb as fuck. Okay. You can retire in two years. I make $500,000 a year. I'm going to fund your lifestyle. You go ahead and live the soft life. I'm going to bust my ass while you do you. No. Hey, lady, you going, hey, 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 I, my, my woman's taste is going to be taken care of, but no, she works too. That's the game. We both working. We both working. I'm going to take care of you, but we both working. Let's move on to the next video, guys. Y'all ready for the next video? Press one. This is a good one here, guys. I think it's a good one. I ain't seen this one yet. I ain't seen this one yet, but I think this is a good one here. I'm ready for the next video. This is a good one. I think it's good. I think it's good. I think so. I think so. I need more ones, guys. Where the fuck y'all at? Where the ones at? There's people. I see people in the audience. And it ain't like there's, I'm talking about myself here. Come on. I asked for some ones and y'all ain't give me no goddamn ones. The fuck's y'all problem? <laughs> what the hell? Flags up in the building. Thank you. About time. I'll just sit back and enjoy the show. All I ask for is you. I, I ain't begging for supers right now. If you throw them, you throw them. I appreciate it. Just ask for some ones and y'all can't give me no goddamn ones. What's wrong with y'all? Lord, y'all just sit back and join the show and then don't want to press one on your goddamn phone or your keyboard. Come on, guys. <laughs> Lord have mercy, man. It's like I'm, if I'm working hard, y'all can just at least press a damn one button. All right. I'm back with another one. I had to get the bourbon. Oh, Rome, you out here drinking. I get it. <laughs> Rome got that brown look in the system. Want some brown weed, baby? <laughs> Why did Red Man say that in one of the songs? I want some brown weed, baby. He wants that Reggie. <laughs> when I think of when you say bourbon, I think of brown. For some reason, I don't know why I want the brown weed, baby. You know, when Red Man say that, he's Red Man has no problem. I mean, I know what it is. I forgot. I just threw a blank here. Red man, one of Red Man's nicknames is Reggie Noble. <laughs> How did I forget that? One of Red Man's nicknames is Reggie Noble. So when he said, I want that brown weed, baby, he wants that Reggie. I get it. Sorry, Red Man. How did I? Oh, man. <laughs> Sorry. Just, that's just me, just me thinking out loud, guys. Shout out to Red Man, one of my favorite rappers of all time. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm typing, damn it. Now I forgot what was typing, damn it, Dave. Corona not helping you. You been, all y'all niggas drinking? The hell, y'all drunk on a Thursday night, man? <laughs> I didn't have wine delivered because I didn't want to pay for the delivery fee, so I saved money. <laughs> y'all be having the alcohol delivered, huh, Sheila? 
<laughs> Red man trolling for some brown weed. <laughs> yeah, he was, Jay. <laughs> yeah, he was, man. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to this video here. Uh, let's, let's see what we got here. Ah, we're back with another one. They're saying it's lagging, and I wonder if it's that song. Yeah, I can hear Hello? I can hear you. You ready? What's going on, Shante? Okay. They were telling me that it's lagging, so maybe, I think it was the headphones cousin, so let's see if it's still lagging. Let's get into All it. All right. She said, they said she's pretty. So we got Tiffany, 31, Illinois, Alec Matu. Oh! I'm a cosmetologist. I own a small business. I didn't. <laughs> Illinois. Y'all know I'm blind. I'm blind reacting right now. She in Illinois. Oh, God. Let the jokes come in. Y'all going to clown me. Bring the jokes. Bring them on. Dave got to take the L. I get it. Shut y'all ninja asses up. I'm taking the L. I didn't know. You know I'm blind, I'm blind reacting. I'm telling y'all that. I didn't know she was an L noise. Illinois. Illinois, plural, whatever you want to say. The people ain't from the town here, the state here. Lord have mercy. Let's go, God. Lord have mercy. So I do hair, braids, makeup, eyebrows. You like that, Vince? Okay, so mm -hmm. you're a licensed cosmetologist? Okay. Um, what's your zodiac? I'm a cancer. Time? Damn zodiacs. You're a cancer? Okay. Um, and hold on one second. All right. So Tiffany, 31, Illinois, mom to 11 year old. You're I've never, never married. been married. Never married. Licensed cosmetologist. Yes. And you are a cancer. They're telling me it's still lagging. So let's see what happens after this. So just wait seven seconds before you answer. Seven um, seconds. They're telling me it's still lagging. What kind of man you looking for, girl? Let's get into it. Um... I am looking for someone who would love to be a husband and a father and who is in the word of God. Okay. Mm-hmm. Point blank like period. That. So your 11-year-old dad- He's involved in her life, life, yeah. What? So, you're, so she has a she father. She has a father. So a yeah. Oh, your lag did. is off, Kendra. I don't know if I keep doing this video. How does she keep having these problems like this? So you want another father? Um, no, but I feel like in order to be with me, you would need to have father father like qualities, or you would need to want to be a father. Um, I could possibly want more kids, um, in the future, and to be with me, I'm raising a daughter, so you would have to kind of be on the same page. I mean, I'm not going to house a man, you know, not to have the ice cream truck. Do, 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 do. That, makes sense. that makes sense. Okay. We got to wait seven seconds. So just wait seven seconds. Go on, seconds. L. Richardson. I'll try to remind you. Is that the ice cream truck? Yeah, is that the ice cream truck? Arizona. She's um, in Arizona right now. You can tell you in a safe neighborhood because the safe neighborhood's got the ice cream truck, the ice cream man. Um, That's a lie, Kendra. How the hell you just moved to California from Chicago? I be seeing the ice cream truck in the hood. You just gonna stop that off, right? I see him on the south side. I you know what though. I see him on the west side in Mexican neighborhoods. You see the Mexican ice cream man. So no, ain't no good name. I I don't see the my, uh, ice cream man in good neighborhoods. All right, I've seen the ice cream man on the west side of Chicago. Stop playing with me, Kendra. Come on now. We got Tiffany thirty one. She's visiting Arizona, but lives in Illinois. Mom to 11 year old. Oh, she's in Arizona right now. All right. What are your deal breakers? Wait seven seconds. Um, my deal breakers would be somebody without a job, somebody without a car, somebody without a place to stay. Um, and someone who just cannot communicate, a manipulator. All those are The hell? Okay, no manipulators. Should he look a certain way? Wait seven seconds. Looks. Um, I'm five seven and a half, and I'm like two hundred pounds. So Whoop. I just feel like he's really, 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 a little taller than me. They can pick me up if need be. Yeah. 
Hold, hold, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. How am I taller than you? And you outweigh me by, depending on the day right now, I'm, I'm intermittent fasting right now, guys. So she outweighs me probably about a good 22 pounds right now on today's fasting day here for me, right? That's not, that's not thick. I'm sorry. I don't know what the Kendra Cam is going to show here. 5'7", 200 is not thick. 5'7", 200 is fat. I don't care what y'all say, all right? I'm a, I'm not tall, but I'm a little bit taller than her. And I am 22 pounds less than that. And you want someone to pick your ass up? This is what we're talking about here. You need to lose 30 to 40 pounds off the rip right now. I'm saying in a healthy environment, you need to be down 50. If you was five seven a buck fifty, we would say, yeah, that's th five seven a buck sixty. We, you're thick, you know. F one fifty to one forty five, you'd be healthy. You need to lose fifty pounds. This is the problem with our black women today, guys. Our black women want to think that they're thick when they're overweight. This is high blood pressure. This is diabetes creeping in. This is everything that we don't think about. You just eat, you a. This ain't healthy. This ain't a good look. I'm 5'7", 200, and then you're going to try to wear some clothes. Like, look at me. I look good. You're not healthy. You're not healthy. Oh, Lord. Let's get up and get back into it. Says she 5'7", with 200. That, uh, that shape, that's a thick. You're yeah, thick I am. That's not shape, thick. Right? That's fucking fat. Well, we're going to get to the Kendra can. We're going to see. What about money? I don't care what y'all say. That is fat, y'all. <laughs> Um, I would say say that is unhealthy. Eighty k a year. Eighty k. You do want more kids yourself? It's not that I don't. It's not that I do. I will be open to more kids. Um, whatever God's plan is for me, I'm cool. You know, I'm bring, raising up great human beings in the world, so we need that. Okay. Can the guy have kids already? I don't mind if the man has kids already. Um, I would just prefer him not to have drama. I would like for him to have a lock on everything that's going on already. Um, so I don't mind. Okay. Let's do the kids or cam. Let's see what how I mean, she I looks. Yeah, you got to stand up. Okay. Let's see what she looks here yeah, with this 200. We stand up and we got to see your full body. Oh, you said full body. Damn. Yeah, bro. full body. Don't be cutting it off here. You got to see your legs. No, no, we got to see Okay. Okay. Here's a problem here, guys. If she's 200 pounds now, and if she gets pregnant again, it's going to be a weight that you're not going to be happy with her. Yeah, no yams, Team Peterson. No yamage. No yamage. Not like you guys see the the belly. You you're not seeing the jeans are cutting things off here. This is this is not healthy, guys. You some guys may say, Dave, she looked good. No, if she's 200 pounds, she is unhealthy. If if her doctor don't have her on high blood pressure medication, if she is not pre-diabetic, she's on the way to it. And that's a fact here. There is no way, there's no situation that women her size should be this weight here. Okay. And in black women, it's like, I'm thick. Yeah, wait till you have another kid. If you do have another kid, and you're, and then after the kid is gone and you still got that pregnancy weight, and you're over 230, 240 at that point here. This, this is not healthy, guys. This is far from it. All right. All right. We see you, mama. <laughs> Turn with it. Now everybody's talking about you saying you want to get picked up. At 200 pounds. Shit. First of all, that can mean many things. Play wrestling. You know, I don't want us to be in danger. And I got to run for myself, too. Like, I can't get on your back and we go. You know? It's not necessarily anything sexual. I'm just saying all the above. I don't want to be a bull. Wait, wait a minute. If you get in danger, you... Hold on. I know you just used the analogy. But if you get a danger, you work down as I can, but is there a possibility that you could take care of me? Am I safe? Am I protected? 
I, okay. okay, I get what you're saying. I say, girl, he got to be a credible hawk to run fast. Like, what in the world? But I, I understand what's the point you're trying to make. Um, what was your last relationship? Um, my last relationship was right before my 30th birthday. So what is that? Almost two years ago. Two years ago. You don't have to answer, but I'm going to ask. When's the last time you was intimate with someone? I don't want to answer that. Because it just happened this past weekend. Pookie's okay. still smashing. Get to these flaws, guys. Get to these flaws. Let's get into it now. Being a little more friendly. Maybe oh. not friendly, but... Oh, you ain't nice? I have, like, a resting bitch face. And it's like I have to try hard to really look welcoming because I am, like, I'm a friendly person. You can talk to me about anything, but sometimes it just rests on my face like you can't. Um... I need to stop overthinking everything and I need to allow myself a little more grace. More grace? What do you mean? One second, guys. Air piece check. yourself a little bit more grace okay and what's the age range you would date tiffany you're 31 i would date like well Ari Lennox say you can't date these niggas today 42 i would date like what oh you caught you caught Ari Lennox Ari now? Lennox <laughs> oh i would date like 35 to 42 you're quoting r b singers that's these women's role models, R and B singers, who can't even lock down their own man. Thirty-five to forty-two. Do you want him to be in Illinois? Yeah, I think that's yeah. I mean, I guess so. Unless he just trying to buy a flight. Okay. All right. Woo. He got to he got to fly you out to oh, see yeah. him. Unless we're like crossing paths or something like that, but just for, yeah. So for the mm -hmm. first meeting in person, mm -hmm. he got to buy a plane ticket. Are you gonna have to no. So, so just to meet you, he got to. Oh, great! Damn, damn, smooth. Absolutely. Now, if you just wanna, if this not what you want, this not what you want. What about meeting? Maybe is there? Well, you just said you cross paths. It's an L. Maybe I'm taking the L. Too. I think here's the deal. I, I don't think here's the thing. I don't think you you never have to give up sex, but I think you have to understand some men's mindsets. If they're buying a plane ticket, they're expecting something in return. God damn right about that. Or do men normally fly you out just to meet them? Um, I would just. Simply say if you if you don't want to do that, you're just not the person for me. That's just is not meant to be for us to meet. Period. Um, have I been flown out before? What they what they say? Flewed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And has anything happened? No. Was he maybe mad later? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Later and then talk to me no more. Maybe. Oh, you a sack chaser. <laughs> oh, that's all I need to know. I mean, hey, for my shy town people, y'all know what I'm talking about. See a sack chaser. Ah, <laughs> we done already. I'm going to finish it off. We done already. This is what we call sack chasers. You allow dudes to fly you out. No one would. Hey, ladies, I'm going to tell y'all something right now. We, we're going to finish the rest of this video. Do not accept plane tickets from somebody to get flewed out if you're not going to do some things, all right? Because if you fly out, you're going to do some things there. That's part of the flew out culture. And you say, was he upset? Yeah, he just paid for you a flight to come in town. He ain't paid for a flight just if y'all be best friends. He, he didn't want no Teddy Ruxpin doll. You know what I'm saying? He didn't want a my buddy doll. My buddy. My buddy. My buddy and me. No, he didn't want no buddy. He want buns. Okay, ladies, I'm not saying that you should go ahead and have sex with guys who fly you in town. The thing is, you should understand what comes with that plane ticket. And unless you have a conversation that says, I'm flying in town and I'm not giving you no booty, let's see how much that plane ticket gets purchased. 
<laughs> right? If you don't have a conversation and next, you know, you go there, he's going to be expect it. it it's some, it, even if you don't talk about it, it is the untalkable explained. <laughs> if you get a plane ticket, he's expecting buns glazing. All right. So y'all need to have a conversation ahead of time. Y'all over here sack chase and get yourself in trouble here. I'm not condoning guys acting buck wild like this here, but in today's day and age with the flu out culture, if you set the plane ticket, just know that Popey buns glaze involved here. And if you're not buns glazing here, then you put yourself in trouble. I ain't trying to justify, you know, if dudes get upset, but it's an understanding. That if I get this ticket, you dropping them draws. Unless I say I don't want the booty when I see you because you catfish me. <laughs> so, ladies, for your own safety, if you take a ticket to fly somewhere, you glazing. And if you ain't glazing, you better have a conversation before you hop on that flight because you're going to come in town and it ain't going to be a good look when, when he's pissed off and then you wonder why the vibe is off and then you're going to try to get your own hotel room, things of that nature. means that you probably came in town for somebody else anyway. You knew you weren't going to fuck him and then you knew that things might go bad so you know you was in town with somebody who might be there and trying to fuck somebody else you did on someone else's dime. The point is, do not take plane tickets from anybody unless you're glazing, unless you told him off the rip, ain't nothing happening. Because if he knew ain't nothing happening, let's see if he actually buys that plane ticket. This is for safety reasons. Even the nicest guy is going to be like, why the fuck are you here? I can't see you every day. So since I can't see you every day, then why the hell am I going to be playing nice? No, this ain't the game here like that. Ladies, don't, you don't get yourself in trouble. Don't, this is why the flu out game is a crazy endeavor. Lord have mercy. Let's get back to this here. But um, that has nothing to do with me. <laughs> nothing to do with you, but that, okay. So you kind of, mm -hmm. okay, you proved the point that I was saying. Again, you don't have to do nothing. I'm not saying. Let's we'll see what Kenny's going to say here. Ticket, you should. But you should know in the back of your mind that's what he's expecting. Thank you, Kendra. <laughs> it's happened before. You didn't give him none, which was your choice. Mm -hmm. But then you also mm -hmm. didn't hear from him again. Did you like him back? Or was it just wanting to go? Yeah, did you like it him? It was just cool. Like, I feel oh. like um, a lot of encounters. I don't feel like I've come across somebody who could be my husband yet. So was it fun? Yeah. Guys, her, she said he was cool. She wasn't into him. She was using him for a free trip. Fellas, this is why I don't even suggest long distance relationships. I don't suggest fluing out. Only time you're doing flu out if the girl lives by you and you're taking a vacation together. That's the only flu out I'm cool with. Like she actually lives by you. You actually see her and you know, you're dating or you're, you're, you're kicking it to a degree, even if it's a situation ship to a degree. Right. And situations are very, very crazy these days. Right. But the only time you do any kind of flew out, you've seen her, you've actually had sex with her. You guys got to, you guys are kicking it to a degree. And so when you go out of town, you know what to expect. If you're just been talking on the internet, and if you never had any kind of conversation about sex and then you don't know if she's really that into you, she's using you for a plane ticket and a free trip, basically, guys. So if y'all don't even have the basic understanding, because even though it should be assumed if you get the ticket, she's down for whatever. But she has proven that he was just cool. Guys, this is ladies. This is how y'all get yourself in trouble. Why are you even accepting a plane ticket for a guy that's just cool? That's not a good, why even do this to y'all selves? Y'all, this is what we talk about when women, they, they want to go online, they go on TikTok, and they say, well, this guy was this, this guy was that here. Did you lead him on? I'm not justifying his actions here, but if you let him on here and then shit hits the fan, you got yourself to blame for it. Oh, my God. This is wild, guys. Let's get back into it. Could I have went without doing it, or could I do it again? Yeah. But See? No, it's not that deep. It is that deep. Oh my God, guys. So what kind of problem? God, well, you heard she said? I know I'm Paul. I, I, I got to get this in. It's not that deep. Not for you because you juice guys. This is the kind of woman that will want to, she's going to want to go out on dates and pay for the babysitter. <laughs> she's the kind of woman that says, no, you're going to have to pay, buy for the, she wants to be a foodie call. Guys, this is a foodie call waiting to happen. This is a foodie call waiting to happen. This is someone who's going to give you desert dick. Oh. 
Look at that, guys. <laughs> On that note. <laughs> Shout out to Frank in the building. Frank just said he he didn't let me finish the video. Frank is like, first of all, you guys know the skip feature. If y'all done and says get this off my screen, you gotta drop the twenty dollar holla or more, guys. Twenty's the minimum. If y'all want to drop twenty five to thirty, y'all can do that as well. But twenty dollar holla, Frank in the building. What's going on, Frank? Cancel that ish like Nino. Skip to my Lou like N one. <laughs> Shout out to Brown. <laughs> hey. My man Frank in the building. Salute. Thank you for the holla. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right back at you on that super skip, man. Shout out to Frank with the super skip, man. We, 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 yeah, we were done. We were done with that one. That's wild. You know what I'm saying? Like, real talk. And I, I want to sound respectful and I want to sound responsible here. We are all adults. Ladies, if you meet somebody online and then it leads to the point of talking on text messages or DMs on Instagram, then phone conversation and FaceTime, and then you guys don't live in the same area, the only way you can meet is through via plane tickets, and he is going to flew you out. You see, that's the term, is the, 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 the nigonometry on it, the nigonomics. We didn't say fly, we say flew you out. If it becomes part of the Flew you out. What is automatically involved with that is sex. Ain't no guy flying no woman across the country just so that y'all can eat a ham sandwich. Ain't no man's going to buy a plane ticket and depend on the dynamics where you're living at. He might be extra nice and he may throw you some money to get to the Uber to the airport. He may throw you some money for your check-in bag at the airport. He's going to pay for the plane ticket. And if he doesn't pick you up, he's paying for the Uber to drop you off the spot there, right? And then while you're in town, he has to entertain you and pay for food and dinner and dining because y'all going to be kicking in under the same umbrella. All this is under the umbrella of Hey, you're going to do this here. We're going to have a little fun. We're going to kick it. We're going to do adult activities, what adults do. That is part of the flu out culture. But you saw how she said, well, it wasn't that serious. He was just, all right. So this, this is guys, this is on y'all too, fellas. This is on you, fellas. I did a reaction video last year about dumbass niggas who are flying these women out. And then when they get in town, they ain't giving you nothing. They acting funky on your asses. <laughs> If you don't have any kind of conversations, you don't have the text messages, you ain't been doing the flirty talking, the dirty talk on the phone, the little nasty sex talking text message, the little tongue emojis, the little splash, splash waterfalls and everything like that. Hell, if she ain't even giving you, you know, like a couple little naked pics just to get you, you know, it's going down. Right. And she don't mean give you like the little tease saying, hey, I can't wait to see you, big daddy. I can't wait to see how we're going to do some things because she wanted just as much as you. And if she's moving like that, that's on you guys. If you don't have the conversation too, fellas, but I understand it's supposed to be implied. We take the ticket, but this is why communication is key because y'all have no idea. These women will be banshees and will take your money and use you for a free damn trip. And then when she gets back home, what she's going to say, it wasn't that serious. Well, that nigga thought it was serious. <laughs> And this is how y'all get yourselves in trouble because you come across the wrong guy who you never met and then he thinking you cool and then when you get here, he could act like a goddamn crazy fool and you never know what kind of fight that y'all get into and you got to understand that you're in a different city. You could be in a different state and technically he's a stranger because you never met him and if this guy acts buck wild, you don't have a support system outside of calling 911. It's all about safety, too, as well. You have no idea because that man's a stranger, just like I'm talking to your fellas about how that woman's a stranger, too. Stranger, motherfucking danger. Okay, so when it comes to this flu out, guys, here's what I'm, I'm going to say this and I'm going to move on. If you're going to fly a woman out, you should be kicking with her for a minute anyway. You should already be talking to her. Y'all have already exchanged pleasantries. You already smashed at least one time. And then when you're going to go on a flew out y'all going together on a vacation spot because you like you like her she likes you and then even if it's a situation ship it's like y'all just want to kick it for a weekend yo you want to be you want to come and travel with me on my dime but if you never met before and then you're going to do this cross country thing y'all better have some phone conversations y'all better have some facetiming y'all better be texting often here and y'all gotta be on the same page when you fly each other in town because if you don't one person 
person's thinking sex, the other person's not, and then somebody's going to get hurt. And I'm not justifying the guys that is going to be hurting women like this here. But you got to understand that that man's a stranger and you don't know if that man's a goddamn pookie. That man's a Ray Ray. That man wants to put hands on ladies here. This is for your goddamn safety. If you don't verbalize that, this woman's going to, you're going to catch cases. And that's why we call them sack chasers. <laughs> Shout out to my man Rod in the building. What's going on, Rod? Good to see you, man. With the four ninety nine five dollar holler, turn the chat green, saying y'all better stop flying these chicks out before you before your ass get a traffic in charge. <laughs> hey, for real, Rod. Oh my bad. No digging. Hey, my man Rod in the building. Hey, Rod. Salute. Thank you for the holler. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right back at you on that Superman. Like this flu out status is messed up. And you want to know something, too? A lot of these guys who are fooling these women out, I'm going to mention it. I'm going to say this here. Y'all ain't got no fucking game. A lot of y'all. Y'all leave with y'all wallet saying that I'm going to fly you in town. You're going to stay in this hotel, you know. We're going to eat at these restaurants. We're going to kick it. And all you kept leaving was your money and your wallet and putting on a goddamn plane. And then, you know, she saw your pictures and she may be attracted to you. And she's like, I'm going to use this for a free trip. And then when she sees you and then you don't look like half like your pictures. And then she automatically friend zoned your ass because the pussy just dries up. And then you're going to be mad saying, oh, how come we ain't doing nothing now? Why are you acting funky? Because you know why? She's a guy goddamn stranger okay and you're a goddamn stranger and y'all didn't have any sexual chemistry until you saw her and then she saw you and it's like there was no chemistry <laughs> this goes both ends here a lot of y'all dudes ain't got no games so y'all leave with y'all fucking wallets there and then when she gets in town and wonder why she don't want to fuck you you know why? Because you love your wallet and you didn't even have the gift the gab to turn her on to say, hey, I know he may not be the best looking, but this dude, he got me in my mind and he's doing all right here. Yeah, I'll go ahead and bust him down. He flew me in town. I'm digging him. But some of y'all don't even understand it. When y'all get and it's an awkward silence and next you know, she's like, well, I was going to deal with this for the weekend. And hopefully nothing bad happens. Lord have mercy, man. Thank you, Rob, for that holler, man. Y'all dudes going to get yourselves in bloody Mary trouble. I'm telling y'all, y'all can get yourselves in play, man. And ladies, this is a game that y'all need to stop playing. Y'all need to stop playing. Y'all need to stop playing. This works both ends here. Dudes leave with a wall with no game and then wonder why she gets in town and ain't trying to fuck you. And ladies, you over here juicing for free trips and don't know if this guy's even fucking crazy or not. Both of y'all put yourselves in harm's way with this fluid out status here. This is wild. This is how people get hurt. And then that's how when women say, well, these no good ninjas, these guys act like this and act like that there. What did you do to contribute to the situation here? You put yourself in harm's way. So stop leaving your wallet, fellas. You can let a woman know that you're doing good of yourself without leaving of your wallet. You know how you do that? It's your presentation. How well you groom yourself. How you keep yourself taken care of. If you're a hair game, you have low hair or long hair like me. How do you dress? How do, what is your presentation? Your cleanliness, your hygiene. You don't got to lead with your motherfucking wallets, guys. She can know you're doing well of yourself without even telling her how much you make by how you address her, how you come and present yourself, how you talk to her, how you are in her presence. She can automatically know this guy got a few pennies. I don't know what he makes, but I think he OK. It's a certain confidence level that you guys got to display here, guys. And you're not going to have it until you become in your manhood. And then you go ahead and walk in the way you're supposed to be walking here. But when you leave with your wallet like this here, just like the girl, just like this girl who said that she went out and didn't do nothing for that guy, you get juice for plane tickets and for a free trip. And for you ladies here, you need to have a better understanding of the guys you're choosing. But we already can see like the women that we're reacting to right now that we're seeing here, these women ain't being, they ain't being mindful. They're not being, you know, doing their due diligence. Man, oh man, what's welcome back, Dank? I try to act broke as possible. I can't act broke, Dank. I I, I don't act broke. <laughs> I get you're young and I get you're younger than me, Dank. I I I, I like your get down, Dank. Me, me, I joke around with you back and forth and everything. I can't act broke no more. I don't. You when you come when I'm out in the streets, you know, like, hey, okay, Dave doing okay in life today. 
Like if people who know me back in the day, they know me now. I was like, oh man, like no, no, the joke of the old McDonald's commercial. Calvin got a job. <laughs> you know, people see me, they're like, damn, Dave, you, you're doing good for yourself now. Like there's a there's a certain way that a man can walk, the way he presents himself, his aura. He ain't gotta say he got any money, but a woman's gonna be like, he got it. I don't know if he make a hundred thousand. 80,000 or a quarter million, but his confidence in the way he, he puts himself saying, he got it. Let me see what he working with. The body is saying a word the way your presentation is. Now, I know some people that's, that's faking it till they make it, but you're going to fake it for so long. You're going to fake it for so long until eventually that facade wears off because that confidence will exude. And then eventually then it's like, yo, he can only show so much until it actually, you got to show up and play the game, you know? Yeah. Finn says traffic. Two of those flying to hook up isn't traffic in hell. Some fly, some like flying Dave. Did you, wait, wait, stop it. Stop it, Vince. I ain't trying to read the rest of this. I ain't trying to read the rest of your chat right now. Stop it, man. Stop it. I ain't reading the rest of that. Hey, I thought I seen Dank driving a 90, 1979 Pinto. Hey, man. Hey, get some. We said, and get some rubbers, the big ones. Damn fucking right. That, that, that's crazy, guys. That's. Man, these these three videos that we done already. Shout out to y'all in the chat here. I, I mean, I know that there's times I say certain things, and you know, it's it's for that's part of his YouTube. I ain't gonna front. Part of his YouTube, it's entertainment. But like I said, when I'm spitting and say I'm spitting facts, I'm just talking like a 44 year old man who's seen some women go through some shit and see some guys go through some shit. And this is like the dad hat on me now because I got a daughter, right? So one thing that some of you guys may not understand too, and maybe some of the ladies, if you don't have any kids, you're gonna, your mentality moves a certain type of way. Even if you got nieces and nephews, once you got your own kid, you really move differently. You really think differently because you got to raise this little one to understand like, yo, man, I don't want you to go through some of this fuckery and things of that nature. You're going you're gonna to grow up and do your own thing because I'm dad. And you're going to think dad is wrong. You know, but if, if you if you see how I roll and how I rock here, you're going to be like, hey, dad, know what you're talking about here. So I'm talking also from a parental standpoint here. It, your life does change when you have a kid. You know what I'm saying? Even though my daughter's only in first grade, I know, but I got nieces and nephews. So it's like, OK, that changes the game. But then when you got your own kid, then it changes your mentality with your nieces and nephews, too, as well. You know, I, it's all about safety. It's all about doing the right thing. It's not about, and here's another thing too, ladies, for the, like this woman here. Why are you wasting the man's time if he is just cool? Dave knew Bill Bellamy. <laughs> hey, I saw Bill Bellamy uh, last year on my birthday. <laughs> you know, my people took me out. He was in town at the, at the Chicago Improv in Schaumburg. Bill Bellamy's funny as hell. I saw him last year. <laughs> but, um, I guess you're super in a second, Frank. But um, what I'm talking about here is why are you wasting the guy's time? What do you got to gain and what do you got to lose? If you know for a fact the guy is just cool and you're not really trying to go there with him, you're just using him for a trip, a free meal, a couple of free meals. You see, this is another thing about safety. You waste the wrong man's time, and you don't know how that man reacts because we got a whole bunch of dudes who do not know how to handle rejection and let that rejection happen when he bought you a three dollars $400 plane ticket and then Uber rides and then dinner, and all of a sudden then you say, I want to sleep in the other room. Like... What do you got to gain and what do you have to lose if you know that you're wasting the guy's time and you're just juicing it for the trip? You see, it's things like this that you got to say, is that trip really worth it? Is your health and your safety really worth it? And same thing for you fellas too. I get it. You want to smash the, you want to smash them draws. You want to bend them over. You want to glaze buns. But what if she's crazy too, fellas? What if you fuck the wrong chick and she gives in and she is expecting the future? 
And then you're like, hey, you know what's going on. It's a flu out game, you know? <laughs> and then she cries bloody grape sandwich. I trusted him and we got in the hotel room. I told him to stop, but he just wouldn't. <laughs> Fellas, y'all got to stop wasting these women's time too as well. You flew them out for the wrong reason. You smashed their guts. They feeling something about themselves thinking they found the one. You over here acting weird and janky. And the thing is, y'all don't be really having real communications on how it's supposed to go down. And then next thing you know, she's saying some things about you. And then now you got to deal with motherfucking Johnny Law. And now you got a possible grape situation on your hands here. And now you got to hire a lawyer to protect yourself here. Record it, Dave. Yeah, even if you record it. Even here's the thing, Vince. I'll get to the super in a second. Even if you record it, you know you still gotta go through the charges. You know you gotta still have her crazy ass come that's over to your house and cause all kinds of ruckus before the police come. And then when the police come, you gotta deal with the fact that will the police take her side or your side before you even get the evidence out. There is so many things that leads to the recording events that sometimes it may not even be worth it. Sometimes she ain't she ain't the one. Why are you going to waste your time with that? Shout out to my man Frank Green, the building with the five dollar holla turned the chat green, saying Al Bunny sold shoes and still held it down. At least Peg was loyal. Drop that neck and never made himself a dodge. Shot Town's finest four TDs in one game. <laughs> hey Frank, you. <laughs> Hey man, hold on. Salud. Thank you for the whole I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Right back at you on that super. If you guys know, I try to keep the supers on the screen longer. I get I pull your comments on the screen. Super stay on the screen a little bit longer because I want to acknowledge them because y'all put money behind that. Hey, you know, even though that was a TV show, that's a fact. Peg didn't cheat on Al. <laughs> know what Peg's problem was? Al didn't want to fuck no more. No, Peg. No. Hey. Peg was horny in the pants. She just wanted, she didn't have to. Here's the thing with Peg. Even though he was only a, a shoe salesman, she didn't have to work. She stayed at home. And even though the house was, you know, it's a TV show, but the idea is that she was a stay at home wife and mom, things of that nature. She hung out, talked to Marcy, her neighbor. And in time to time, she just wanted Al to smash her gut because she was horny and hot in the pants. You can't ask for too much on that, right? <laughs> yeah, he may have a problem with her. Pig Hooters, you know what I'm saying? She could have been, she had problems. You know, Al had to deal with crap because all the dick nanigans that she put him through. But at the end of the day, she didn't cheat, and all she wanted was the dick. <laughs> Fellas, you can't ask for much from your girl, right? And, 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 and much you may talk about Peg wearing the leopard outfit, at least Peg was in shape and she kept her body tight so that Al would smash when he did have to smash. <laughs> <laughs> but man, come on, after I was a sitting calm, but at least Peg didn't cheat, and all she wanted was the Al to bend her over. <laughs> That's right, Team Peterson. Polk High MVP. This scored four touchdowns in one game. I'm shocked that no one broke that record. For all those years that Mary with children on the uh, on the air, no one at Polk High had more than four touchdowns in the game. What's going on at Polk High? Rome says, it's extremely why I'm careful. It's why I don't make decisions based on looks or smashing when it comes to relationship. If they can damage my career, I don't I don't even give these types of the opportunity. Let me give you all before I, I'm about to get out of here. I'll be here for four hours. I'm going to eat my dinner in a second. Let me give you all a real story. What we say here, Dank, I'll buy us. I'll buy a second before I buy a pair of Jordans. I wear Sperry's and Vans. I hear you. Nothing wrong with that, man. If it works your wardrobe, man, they comfortable. Do what you got to do. Yeah, and not everybody got to wear Jays. I, I buy Jays. I'm 44 years old. My last name is Jordan. And I can afford them now. You know what I'm saying? So it's a different ball game for me. But let me tell y'all something real quick. True story. Had a woman who tried to make me lose my goddamn job. <laughs> this is not like this situation here, but this is when you know that when you see women who are not on your level and sitting on your level, you're not moving the same way. I was dating this girl who I was working with about, let's see now, if I'm 44 years old now, this happened uh, 16 years ago. 16, 15, 16 years ago, right? 
like she was a little bit older than me, but she worked in the job and everything like that. But the thing is that once we started dating, you working, you don't. First thing I'm saying is that you don't shit where you eat, guys. That's why I'll never date anybody who I work with. And you want to know something in this situation here, guys? She was seeing other niggas while she was dating me. We were dating. I was over her house, and it's the last time that it was. Stepdaddy season. She had a daughter too. And that's the thing that got me in trouble because her daughter was so fucking sweet and everything like that. She was a cool kid. I like hanging around with her and playing for her, playing video games. She was cool as hell, right? That's how that's how fellas get stuck in into stepdaddy season. When the kid is cool. The mother's a goddamn banshee, but the little girl is a girl. She's cool. She's she's a fun. That's what kids are. Kids are fun. You know what I'm saying? So, man, there have been times like it just me and her go to Subway. She wouldn't even come with us. We'll go to Subway and shit like that, right? But she was seeing other niggas while she was seeing me. And you know how I found out? I walk in the kitchen one night. This is how I'm kicking. I'm at the house at 1 a.m. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to the kitchen and she left her phone out unlocked. I literally looked down and I didn't have to go through her phone. The text message says, I miss you. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> you miss her and I'm right here? Oh, hell no. Right now, I confronted her about that shit. You know what she did? She reported my black ass to HR. The shit that happened in her condo. When we got back to work Monday, she, she reported me to HR. Yeah. Yeah, she got busted. She got busted. I caught her. I was like, who the hell is this? Right? And then all of a sudden, then she's going to report my black ass to HR. And then you know what happened? I sat down to HR. The story that she gave HR was a totally different story than when I gave HR. And you know what HR told me? Your day, your, your story sounds more believable than her, Dave. Some don't sound right about her story. It went on for a couple of weeks, man. My boss was worried I was gonna lose my job. He's like, Man, I, I've been I hired this guy, like this guy, he gonna get fucked up by some pussy. You no, know what happened the last minute I have HR. You no, know they told me, Dave. Obviously, you were moving one way in the relationship. She was moving the other way in the relationship. It's a he say, she say situation. Can you hear the story? But obviously, you both were on the same page. This is not a fireable offense because I heard your story and I heard his your her story and I don't have anybody else to corroborate anybody's stories. Just stay away from her, Dave. Just stay away from her, okay? That's what they told me. And I'm saying here we're about this flu out game here. If y'all not on the same page, just stay away from them. If you're not on the same page, just stay away. All you're asking for is more hurt and more damage, reputation loss, financial loss. Everything that you built and worked up for could be gone because she don't want to be held accountable for her messing around or doing what she's doing here or not taking you seriously. And then she feels a certain type of way where she automatically makes herself the victim. And when a woman makes herself the victim and then she starts pulling those tears down, unless you got evidence, unless you got things to corroborate and back yourself up, fellas, you're going to be in a whole world of hurt. So it's like I said, Vince, not just women you don't work with, but also these situationships where that you don't have a common understanding or conversation of how you're moving. Or these flu out situations where you never met before, but you don't have a conversation. How y'all going to move when y'all together? Y'all not having FaceTime. I'm going to say this here, right? And if this should not even be a caveat. If for some reason you can't help yourself, you better be having some sexy FaceTimes. You better be having some virtual sex in the FaceTime situation. <laughs> if that's not even happening where she's doing something like that, then you, you, shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be doing it anyway. But the whole point is, it's about safety. Ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourselves. Watch out for yourselves. Because when you play these dangerous games, you know what happens? You're a fool and you're going to win a dangerous ass fool prize. So, flu out status? No. Don't do it. Working with somebody? Don't do it. And here's the thing, too. Some relationships started at work. But, fellas, why would you why would you jeopardize your bag? Because what if it doesn't work out? 
You got to see this other person through the hallways, at the lunch break room, at the coffee room, whatever the case may be. And whatever animosity that you that may have, maybe she's the did wrong and you did wrong. Either way, the tension, it can't be, you know, it's going to be so thick in the air. So as I as we get her in this live stream here, be safe about yourselves. That's because I, I went through this diatribe because of what she said. And is your safety really worth a free trip? Vince says, hell, had a white bull dyke made an issue of a job, had a Mary stripper hug my leg in front of everyone. She was drunk, didn't fuck neither one. That's what happens when you're in a position of power. Damn, man. Oh, see you later, Sheila. You're out of here. All right. Sheila's out of here. Don't fuck with women you work with, fellas. Exactly. Just walk away. Lord humongous. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it's it's wild that people put themselves in bad positions. I was 28, 29 years old. So I, I learned that the hard way. But thank God, though, that I protected myself with everything that I knew in that situation. And I left that job. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of crazy. I saw her later on down the line because I, I saw her at the train station like a decade later and everything. Because she works. The irony is that she works downtown Chicago like me now. And I saw her in the city. And she looked at me and was like, oh, because she was. Here's the thing, too, guys. She was seven years older than me. I was I was 28. She was 35. So now the last when I saw her, you know, and it's like, oh, my gosh, she's like, you know, she sees me. She's in her 50s now. And then she sees me. It's like, oh, man, David came up. Is that the same Dave at 28? <laughs> David is mid 30s looking kind of good right now. And I, 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 I was I was rude to her. I ain't going to front. I'm like, you try to get me fucking fired. Why am I going to be? Why am I going to be nice to you? That's such a long time ago. You tried to get me fucking fired. Why'd you go to HR for? This is an A and B situation here that happened in your condo, and you went ahead and ran to HR because you knew that since we weren't going to be together no more, you didn't want to see my face. So you want to eliminate me from the whole situation. So how you do that? You go to HR and hopefully he gets fired. That's how crazy these women are. One second, they're telling you how much they feel about you. You catch them in their dick nanigans, and they're trying to make you lose your livelihood. Think smarter, fellas. Think smarter. Think motherfucking smarter. <laughs> All right, guys, that's my time. I'm going to get out of here. I need to go eat my dinner. It's a, it's a seafood weekend, except for Sunday. I went ahead, guys. I did a whole bunch of shopping here, guys. I got salmon waiting for me upstairs. I got some salmon waiting for me upstairs right now. I got a whole bunch of crap left. And the sausages and all that stuff. So yeah, I'm about to get my seafood on, you know. But I'm doing my my intermittent fasting, so I I'm like starving my black ass right now. I'm like have not ate the entire fucking day. I I ate this morning and had my coffee and haven't done shit right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just get me a half piece of this salmon and call it a night, guys. I'm trying to I'm getting my weight right again. You know, I do this intermittent fasting every now and then. <laughs> It's real good for me too, you know, to keep help me keep my weight down when I have my bad months when the holidays come in. You know what I mean? Come on, sons of seafood. Did you get some cheddar biscuits, Dave? Nah, I didn't go to Red Lobster. I'm gonna cook it myself. Come on, son. Nah, nah. I got tired of um going to places. I love crab legs. Come on, son. And um, I got tired of paying thirty five dollars for two crab legs. You know, for a pound, whatever. And I can go to the grocery store and buy like eight eight clusters for like thirty nine dollars. You know, and then, you know, you, all, you know, I, I got my recipe down pat. It tastes just as good at those spots in the shop here. It's like, Yo, let me go ahead and cook my own damn crab legs. Yeah, it's just a little bit more work and effort. But you know what, though? I only get two clusters for 35. I got eight clusters for 39. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to go. No, no red lobster. I got my own shrimp here. I'm doing it my own. Diet. Your boy can cook. See, that's one thing that y'all may not know, right? <laughs> Before I get out of here, your boy can cook. Your boy can throw. Your boy can burn in the kitchen, man. It's not about eating out all the time. I'll go to the grocery store. I'll buy what I need to buy, and I'll cook when I need to cook and save me some money when I need to. I, I'm in a position where that, hey, I can go ahead and get anything. Uh, I can eat out every day if I want to, but that's not price. That's not right. You know what I'm saying? Spending a whole bunch of money like that? 
Nah, go ahead and cook your own groceries, guys. Go to the grocery store, save yourself some money, and cook yourself your own groceries. And if you got your lady at home and tell her, hey, baby, this is what I want here, and you buy the groceries and have her cooking for you. It's a give and take type of situation. She loves you. She going to respect you. So I'm going to cook my man this meal. This is what he wants. Or you go ahead and give her a grocery list when you're busy as hell working 14 hours and say, hey, baby, can you make this for me? And she go ahead and do it. You know what I'm saying? Not these flew out chicks that's going ahead and use you for a goddamn trip. <laughs> no. He's like, no, you just ordered the cheddar biscuits to go. Now I'm a, you know what? Come on, son. Now I'm not doing that because they you can you can make them your own in the grocery store now. So I'm gonna buy a box and make my own cheddar biscuits. I've been seeing it a whole bunch of uh, times now when I go to the store. You're like, you no, know, Red Lobster has been branding out, so you can make your own cheddar biscuits, man. So I'm gonna give that a try, man. And, and if I kill it, oh man, I mean, the fuck Red Lobster cheddar biscuits. I make my own cheddar biscuits. <laughs> Thanks for the sports talk, Dave. Oh, no doubt, Derek. No doubt. That took up the first hour and a half of the show. <laughs> but that was fun, though. That was fun, man. That was fun. For real, even better. Yeah, no doubt, man. Team Peter says, good morning, y'all. The call to prayer is going off. Yeah, 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 yeah. No doubt. No doubt. No doubt. All right, guys. I'm going to get out of here. I appreciate y'all. This is another four-hour live stream. Uh, if everything works out right, I hope I'll be back here tomorrow. I know it's Friday. It's the weekend, but... um. I ain't got no plans. That's, that's what happens when you're 44 years old and you're thinking about grinding. You're building. I could go out and kick it tomorrow night, but you know what I'm going to do? When I get off work, we'll see if I can be back here again. You know what I'm saying? Y'all will want me back on a Friday, right? Will y'all show up or y'all kick it in on Friday? Thank you, Team Peterson. So, but before I go here. All right. And I see, Derek, that you email me quite a few times that I have not checked all your emails. <laughs> so I got to check your other emails you sent me today. You sent me an email around noon. Then I know I got one from yesterday that I haven't even checked out yet. No, I got two from yesterday I haven't checked out yet. You sent me some other joints. And I have some videos here that you sent me, Derek, I couldn't even get to here. What's going on, MOP? I'm about to get out of here. I'll pull up, Dave. That's what's up, man. Oh, MOP, I use show up. That's what's up, man. Zick says, I cook most of what I eat. Hey, hey brother, that's what it's supposed to be, man. I mean, we can go out and eat, man, but if you cook your own food, you know what you put in yourself. You know what I'm saying? You, hey, you, you know the additives, you know the seasoning, you know everything you're doing. Whether the water boiling or frying, you know if you're cooking it bad, you're cooking it good. It's good for you, man. Yeah. I'm off till Sunday? Dope. All right, guys, I'm getting out of here. I don't celebrate Good Friday, so I'll come back tomorrow. Yeah, I don't celebrate the shit either, but hey. All right, guys. I'm that dude named Dave. Appreciate y'all. And I'm out of here. I'll be back again. On that note, peace out. <laughs>